Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Dark Art Society Podcast. I'm your host, Chet Czar. Today is Tuesday, April 25th, 2023. I always forget to say that. Um, I'm actually recording this before the interview, which I almost never do, and I've got just about 10 minutes, so i got to make it quick. Today's interview is with the amazing Sean Barber. He's a brilliant artist, brilliant tattooer, super, super good. Just a great guy, great guy, um, one of my favorite people in the world. And uh, he's coming on for an interview in about 10 minutes, um, so that's going to be great, I'm sure. Uh, let's see, what is going on? I took two weeks off from the podcast, as you may have noticed, if you're a regular listener, because I had to get some stuff done. I just, it was a lot easier to not do the podcast for two weeks to take care of this stuff. So I'm feeling a little more caught up and... Uh, I think as long as I allow myself the option of doing that every once in a while when I need it, I don't see why I can't just keep doing this podcast forever if you all want it. Um, yeah, still a couple more tool posters and I'm out of the, out of the woods with that. Um, various commissioned things. I'm, I'm, I was able to cross some things off my list of things to do this year. So I'm making progress. Very excited about that. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty much what's going on with me. If you want to uh, support the dark art society podcast, this is all listener supported. You can go to patreon.com slash dark art society and join for as little as a dollar. And you can get in the uh, Facebook group, the private Facebook group and, discord server which isn't really very active but the facebook group is always really active you get the podcast a day early and also you get your name read in the air so oh man put some glasses on here these are my mom's glasses when my mom died she had all these <laughs> cheaters she used to call them reading glasses i need glasses so bad i need i need to go just get some prescription lenses so uh let me see who do we have here uh jenny smiter did i say that last time well if i did i'll say it again jenny smiter thank you for supporting travis white thank you for supporting um uh, sergio g thank you the dead scribe 666 thank you so much uh jessica moran chavez thank you that's great. Lots of new subscribers. I really appre appreciate everybody supporting this. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's... I've got some big plans for this year. Um, just trying to get grow the podcast. If you can like and subscribe, if you're... if you're uh, Whatever you're watching, listening on, that will help. If you can spread the word about the podcast, that would help. I still feel like this podcast is, is really good and unique. And I don't think there's another one like it. And I, uh, I just want to get it out to as many people as possible. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's it. Uh, let's get on. Is there anything else? Am I forgetting something? Um, I don't think so. I think that's it. Let's get on with the interview. Okay. Sean Barber. Here we go. Hope you enjoy it. What's up, Sean? What's up? <laughs> Thank you How so you much. I'm good. I'm good. I'm great. It's I'm so excited to have you on the podcast, man. It's been... I'm happy to be here. Yeah. I yeah, could have sworn I love, had love what you do. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Well, I love what you do too. You know, I'm uh one of your biggest fans. In fact, you know, I, I don't know that. I don't know if I ever told you, but when I was first starting learning to paint, uh, your video, maybe I told you, your DVD was one of the one of the Probably the first video I ever bought on your oil painting video. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It was massive black production. It was. Something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are, those are good friends of ours. Yeah, yeah. So that was like uh, 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 very instructive, you know, because I was just Thanks, trying to figure Thanks. all this stuff out. 
I did my best at the time. Yeah. That's all we could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was great for me. It was like, oh man, it just is one of those things where you, you see it and you're like, oh, that makes sense, you know? Hell yeah. Yeah. So, um, when nope. did you start painting? Uh, I, I, at uh, 2000 is when I was like, okay, I'm okay. Gonna, I've made the decision to, to try it. And, um, nice. yeah, uh, I'd, I'd always drawn, yeah, 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 you know, and I was sculpting and I painted creatures and stuff in the film industry. But as far as like oil paintings, I had done two or three throughout my life, maybe, you know? Okay. Okay. What about you? Cause you, you're, you're, uh, you, I mean, I've been all over the fucking Yeah, place. yeah. It's like, are you, um, I don't, do, do you consider yourself like more of a tattooer now? Or, or are you uh, like 50 50? I'm just an artist, man. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, 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 call, I, I consider myself a painter. Yeah. Just because that's, that's where you, you started. Know. Isn't that's it? Where I started, well, growing up, I was interested in drawing superheroes. So, mm. you know, <laughs> I had painted a little bit in high school. Um, but I wanted to be an inker up until I was about 25. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I didn't know really much about fine art other than, you know, what little bit high school teacher showed me or, you know, uh, I went to a community college at high school and for a little bit and there was, I stumbled into um, a museum in Utica, New York and saw, man, this part 80, 88, 89, I saw a Jerome Whitkin painting. Mm. Uh, and it was a narrative painting of uh, um, like his parents' divorce, and it really struck me. It was a uh, it was like a comic book panel, mm. uh, but as a painting. Wow! And it's very power powerful image imagery, and you know, I I was drawn towards it, but I was so consumed with wanting to work in comic books that I didn't really grasp what I was looking at. Mm. Um, it's like, oh, cool um yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh yeah you know a lot of things have changed over the years so wh where did you where'd you where were you born where'd you grow up i was born in Cortland, new york which is central new york mm. about 35 miles south of syracuse oh, okay so right in the middle of the state and then i lived there uh born in 1970 i lived there until i was about 19 uh, I moved away a couple times. I moved to Anchorage for a little bit. Whoa. Went back. <laughs> uh, moved to uh, Santa Ana out of high school with some friends. Did a lot of drugs. Worked in uh, Newport Beach at a um, a printing company called Minman Press in Newport Beach. I was mm -hmm. a paste-up artist. Mm. Did that for a little bit. And then went back to New York. And I worked in factories. I worked in food service, a factory. I worked in food service. I worked construction, uh, just kind of, you know, whatever whatever jobs that were available in that small town. So what happened with the inking? Did you, um, was that like something you tried to do and couldn't quite find a way to get in? Or did you kind of just start working odd jobs and just kind of went where I, it went or what? I didn't have enough confidence to pers really think that I had anything to pursue it as a career. Uh um, so it was more like just a dream sort of? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I would send stuff out to places like, um, oh man, I don't even remember. I, 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 when I found painting, I abandoned comics completely and I never came <laughs> back. Um, what, what was uh, uh, Todd McFarlane? What was his image? Image yeah, comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I sent Image some things and, you know, like – Several months later, uh, this guy was it Rob Liefeld? I don't remember his name. Uh, Savage Dragon comic. Mm -hmm. I had a, a character called Vane, and it was like this. <laughs> this is 80, 87, 88. Uh, this black superhero who had veins that like came out of his body and were you know had all these powers. <laughs> That's kind of cool. And I, I like and that. I, and, I, and I and I sent this to Image, and a few you know several months later, they had a, a fucking character named Vane. And no it, it way kinda, it kind of it kind of crushed my you know my uh enthusiasm for pursuing that art form did, did it have the same characteristics or did they just steal no the name? just the the name and the the characteristics but it didn't look the same yeah same name and yeah that sucks man it was you know it's it, it is what it is 
Yeah. I, I'm assuming that happens often. You yeah. Know? It's not even, it's probably not even intentional. Yeah. I mean, people maybe. see things and they're, you know, they, they're, who knows? That's the generous um, perspective, I suppose. <laughs> I, I just don't care anymore. Yeah. You know, I can't, at the time, it it, destro- it it crushed me, you know. But right. uh, you know, I was I was dating a girl who she's like, "You're you love art. You keep doing this. Like, you should go back. You should go back to college." So I went to a private school in upstate New York uh, called Casanova College. I went there for two years. Mm. Got everything I could out of it. Took sculpture, printmaking. Mm. Um, poetry classes, like all different kinds of things. Cool. Um, Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it, it sounds awesome. sounds really fun. Uh, met a lot of different kinds of interesting individuals, and transferred to an art school in Florida right after that. Mm. And that's where I really like fell in love with painting and had some peers and colleagues and great instructors and just everything just totally changed oh what school was that uh ringling school of art oh that's right Sarasota, florida yeah yeah you were you were mm-hmm. a ringling dude yeah and it, it was you know it was time and place i went there with some fucking great enthusiastic young artists who were at different points in their lives there was a couple uh, i was a non-traditional student so when i went there i was 28 i graduated at 30 mm, wow um, um was everybody younger uh, than you mostly but there was you know like carl dobsky had transferred there mm-hmm. um with a couple of other guys one guy who was one of the original founders of massive black um chris reiniak was a good friend of mine there oh, no way uh, a lot yeah. of a lot of dudes who like went on to do commercial illustration uh, I was roommates with this kid, Kevin Llewellyn. We were best friends at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a lot of great artists came out of that school for sure. Yeah, and I had some. I had uh, some great teachers. I had a, a painting instructor who um, really showed me how to focus on color, uh, mm. painting from observation. And yeah, your co- your, color. I have to say, your color, uh, um, your your knowledge of color, I, I is one of my favorite things about your, your, your paintings, Thanks, man. you know, Thanks. I really, I really, Thanks. um, try, I, I try keep trying to, I'm, I keep trying to desaturate my color. I'm like, it's too colorful. <laughs> I keep trying to pump mine up because it's, <laughs> it's too muted. <laughs> so maybe that's why I like it. Um, yeah, it's, it's colors always been a bitch for me. It's something I constantly, uh, I don't know if struggles the right word, but it's not mm-hmm. one of the things that come natural to me. Okay. You know, like the draftsmanship, um, kind of treating the treating the the painting like a sculpture in a way, painting sculpturally. That's that always felt very natural to me. But color was always like, I don't know. It's just uh, you know, certain certain aspects of painting come e- come easier than others. You know. Sure, 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 sure. You know? I I find myself the last couple of years because I mostly paint from from photographic reference that I take. Mm-hmm. Is I've been more and more working from uh, grayscale photos. Oh, right. Just to focus on uh, light and form. Yeah. And I'm much happier. With, I can get to where I need, I, I can get the results even faster. Like I work pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the illusion of something looking like a finished painting in a short amount of time. And then it's the laborious, you know, practice of just rendering and rendering and, and, yeah trying to make it more full. Um, but the, the grayscale is helping me really, uh, lean into getting the anatomy of something a lot faster. Right. And yeah. The three, the three dimension, three dimensional, you know, the form of the, of the thing. Yeah. Whatever yeah. It is. Yeah. That's why I, I mean, I went through a, a phase when I, early on when I was teaching myself to paint and it was, I, I uh, stumbled upon the grisaille, technique where you're painting everything mm-hmm. in grayscale and then glazing yeah um and that really i i um uh, really liked that technique because it's like i just i could just focus on the on the values and not have to think about the i guess that, that's that's what's difficult for me is thinking um and it's like i can do it i do it i, I know how to do it now but it's sure, not it sure. doesn't feel na- as natural as other things it's like but but when you think you were thinking about color and value is like, they're two different things kind of, sure, you know what sure. I mean? So, oh, yeah. so, so doing the grisaille was, 
underpainting was just like, oh, okay, I could focus on this. It'll be mm-hmm. dry and fixed, and then I can deal with coloring after. Yep. And, and it's more tedious, but... Um, I think mo- most two-dimensional art is drawing. Yeah, yeah, for so sure. The, most of the paintings that we make and the things that we're interested in, it's somebody's hand that's drawing with a whether it's a graphite pencil or you know a flexible medium whatever that is like we're we're moving it around and mixing it in a way to create that volume but it's right. drawing it's rendering yeah 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 and that's that's my that's the thing that I've done the longest in my life like I was drawing since mm-hmm. I was 3 years old you know sure so um that was good training for being a painter i guess so okay um you you uh, uh how 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 was it that you fell in love with painting? It was this was it a, 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 a acrylics or oils? I mean, did you start with oils and just go? Oh it my was god, oil. this is it. It was, was oils. oils from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I worked in acrylic quite a bit in the uh, the private college. I had a I was an illustration major, um, and they had us using more acrylic than oils mm-hmm. for whatever you know because of speed and. and efficiency uh and i liked it but once i started using oils the 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 life that it has and and the flexibility in terms of being able to it's just so pliable you can manipulate it so many different ways right um it's this color you know this colored clay that yeah just has it has a life of its own that's an interesting way of thinking about oils colored clay <laughs> it's kind of mm-hmm. like that <laughs> yeah yeah depending <laughs> how much you, you know is it a, is it a, a thin sheen of 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 clay or is it a you know a dense right you know dollop of material right right yeah that's really cool so did do you know you... do you know steve steven Assel? yes i know the name uh, he's a, a figurative painter he, he we did a, a workshop in Mesa Black and he was one of the teachers there and watching him work, he was slapping thick layers of, you know, all these different colors and values of paint with thick fan brushes and just kind of viscerally like moving and sculpting this paint around the surface and then modeling it after it was on the surface. It was like, oh, interesting. Was awesome to see. Oh yeah. I know this guy's stuff. He's amazing. Yeah. He's amazing. I mean, he can rend- he can render like nobody. Yeah, that's <laughs> like like an angel. He's an angel. <laughs> uh so did you uh did you struggle with oils at all or did you kind of take to take to it? Because I know no, I-, I was so enthusiastic. Oh really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, I I think I struggled a little bit because I, I started like messing with acrylic and I was like, okay, I mm-hmm. got how acrylics works and I and I and I definitely was like I fell in love, but it was still like, you know, there's a lot to learn <laughs> about. Sure, <oil. laughs> sure. I think I, I was just so excited about it. I just made a lot of things. Yeah. And in in the beginning, definitely. Uh, I mean, we were doing life study, a lot of um, plain air painting and working from a live model. Mm-hmm. And they didn't look great, but it was, a, a, you know, a training ground to just practice moving, moving different pigments around. Yeah, yeah. Um, in a, in a a safe space where you know you're being judged by your peers and your teachers, but who the fuck cares? Right. You know, this, is a, I mean, this is a place to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like so much fun. Uh, you know, th- I I have this story about you. I tell people a lot, and um, uh, it also happens to to be to coincide with the fact that y- you're the only painting class I ever took. That one time you invited oh, me nice. to sit in. And I I often tell people uh, when I'm kind of like just talking about what a great painter you are is how I was working from this live model, which I had done um, after high school. I took a a community college class on life drawing and that was pretty much it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I hadn't painted from, I I did some uh, still lives, but not painting from a live model. And I, was painting this model in your studio. I was so nervous that day. It's like just Not painting in front of Come you. On. And I, there was a couple other people and I was just like, Oh man, but I, I did it anyway. Cause I knew it was a great opportunity. Um, and, uh, so I was painting this model and I couldn't get the face to look. I don't know if you even remember this. You probably don't even remember, but I couldn't get the likeness. I couldn't get it. And then you walked over and you're like, do you mind? I'm like, no, please. And you just went like, 
and did about like three strokes and boom, yeah. it just looked like her. And I was just like, fuck. I mean, yeah, <laughs> That's I, how I it's done. It's, <laughs> I think it's easy. If you have a visual, visual mind and you know proportion and aesthetics, you could do it to somebody's somebody else's work as well once you're like your mind and your head's trapped in it you're not yeah. thinking outside of that thing that's right in front of you true um true. yeah you, you, you you're you it's hard to judge your work objectively when you're the mm-hmm. one creating it on the other hand though it was like you know i could just see that it was like you you had so much experience painting likenesses uh, sure uh, yeah done a million, a lot of faces. you've done a lot of head and shoulder 1770 portraits. something <laughs> it, that wouldn't even surprise me if it was yep. true. <laughs> oh, it is. I have a list. No, you haven't done. I'm a 70. maniac. You've done yeah, seventy. <laughs> yep. Seventeen hundred paintings of yep. portraits. That's insane. Not all portraits, but okay. 70? Mostly, mostly portraits. That's insane. That yeah. is insane. That's great. Um. So yeah. So uh. uh anyway, we were we were uh, talking about your. Oh, you you took took the uh. You're excited about oils, and then you just where did we where did we go from there? You just kind of continued focusing on oils. Well, it, you know, at this time I'm fuck, thir- about to graduate. I'm 30 years old. Everybody I know is going to like. Wh- how are you going to make a living? Uh, well, comics isn't something I want to do. Mm-hmm. I I wanted to make images that were. Um, things that were self-expression, you know, paintings that, that were from, from the self and, right. and narrative things. And I had done some kind of autobiographical stuff. And then I um, actually started uh, in the summers. I was teaching, I was a, a TA for a summer. And then I was uh, teaching uh, pre-college, which was a one month long summer school program where high school kids from around the world would come in and, and basically be an art school for a month. Hmm. And then I ran that program for a couple of years before moving to San Francisco. Um, um, but being around high school kids, uh, I was watching a lot of uh, Law and Order SVU and 9-11 happened. And it was just a world of chaos. And all these young kids are just like, what the fuck is going on? Right. Um, so I started painting. Um, well, the, the first one was a, um chris reignac uh we were part of a group we would pull our money together do some advertising print promotion for illustration and fine art uh and uh i did a a painting of like a mechanical doll Mm -hmm. and then i started i was like oh there's there's something about this image imagery uh i think i can lean into this so i started painting some more plastic dolls and like creepy creepy dolls <laughs> and 9-11 happened and teaching high school kids. And so I started to um, use it as social commentary mm. um, before that living in Sarasota um, at the time, I think it was like this, this was a statistic. It was like the second most segregated city in America. Yeah. And we were in like, you know um, the black neighborhood and I had become friends with some kids in there and some folks who would live there. So I made it, started making some paintings about um that situation uh and i had a an interest in pursuing social commentary Mm -hmm. from seeing you know seeing jerome wickens work and um just people who had a narrative in a voice Um, right um so initially like the the paintings that i was really passionate about were those and then i was doing some introspective self-portrait work about you know my upbringing and you know, coming from a, a broken family and all those mm. things. Um, yeah, it, it was interesting. So you, oh, uh, oh, I know what I was going to say. Okay. So all my, all, all, everybody I knew was like, how do we get work? Uh, so many people were working in video games. Mm. Like uh, Carl went to New York to pursue figurative at the New York Academy. And then he went on to Jacob Collins. Uh, Kevin got hired early at um um black isle studios like a video game company in um uh, southern california and then andrew jones who we went to school with Mm -hmm. i don't know if you know android yeah i i know i don't i've never met him i don't think but i know yeah he was he was one of the early founders of massive black as well right He, he he had gone on to work in games and then on this other guy jason um who was part of massive black he went there and they were like we can get you a job here uh and you know if i had done it at the time i would i wouldn't have this 
school loan debt that I still have. Um, oh, really? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But I was determined to be a painter. Um, and in the program, you know, you do a, a, a senior thesis. Uh, and I did two. I did one for my own fine art, and then I did one for commercial illustration. Mm. I had I had a couple of illustration teachers who had done editorial, and I had done some trips to New York and other places, and kind of leaned into that a little bit because I, I was like, well, I can I can practice painting by doing illustration and apply these skills to my own art. If I'm just painting all the time, I'm going to get better. Right. So this is the pursuit I'm going to take. And then I started teaching a little bit. So there was like a balance of, you know, I have these kind of three jobs where I'm, I can do a little bit of illustration, a little bit of fine art, a little bit of teaching, and I can get by doing that. Mm. Um, Yeah. I don't want to, I, I want to ask you technical questions, but not yet. Do it. All right. <laughs> no, I, I and, will. You know, and I didn't play video games. So it was like, ah, yeah. right. You know, and I moved, I moved out there and I was roommates with Kevin for a little bit when he was working at that studio. And, you know, I'd go Southern, to Southern these... California. You moved. Yeah, this was uh, Irvine, Irvine. Oh, OK. Um, you know, and these guys were just they were making lots of money and just fucking throwing it around. And I was working at Borders Books and Music at that time, <laughs> bar- barely getting by. And, you know, I, 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 I was struggling. Oh, um, man. Uh, wow. and you know, that side note on that, um, I, I was in the Eastern religion section and I knew nothing about that. And that kind of helped inspire me in a lot of ways. I stumbled onto this guy, uh, Krishnamurti. Oh, no way. I was, yeah. I was reading some of his, his work. I'm a big was, Krishnamurti fan. It really, really changed my life. Wow. How cool. Yeah. My, my, uh, dad, my stepdad was way into Krishnamurti. He got me into Krishnamurti nice. when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I, uh, I lit my first apartment in Hollywood was a, um, it's funny because I just tweeted this, okay. uh, like 10 minutes before we went on, uh, it was, uh, it, it, this apartment was a, an ex monastery turned into apartments. That was a theosophical society monastery and the theosophical society were the Krishnamurti people. Oh, wow. Yeah, Brad, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's <laughs> but super yeah, had cool. a, had a super cool vibe that place. All Very everybody cool. was artists that lived Very there too. Cool. It was such a great time. Very cool. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah. So you're you're uh, uh, kind of did, did 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 your uh, c- uh, commercial career kind of start to take off first? Slow, slowly, slowly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you've I, done I, a ton of. You did like a bunch of covers for magazines, hundreds and and hundreds of commercial illustrations, lots of editorial. And you were doing it back when it paid well. It paid okay. Okay. Some some did, some didn't. You know, some jobs like um uh uh, not the New Yorker um, you know, like the Village Voice is a new you know New York newspaper that would pay like two hundred fifty dollars. Oh. And other jobs, I did a. Oh man, this is 2003. I did a uh, 52 portraits for the TED conference Jeez. in in a month and a half. And no that way. Pay, that paid 20 grand. You know, Holy it's like, shit. oh, I can make that kind of money in a month and a half. But that's insane, though. <laughs> 52 uh, it portraits was, in a month. I was teaching and doing other things, and it was not. It was damn. It destroyed me, and and um, was the beginning of my shoulder hand issues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I bet you know. I bet it. Uh, after a month, you were you were that much of a better painter, because there's oh, yeah. there's nothing oh, yeah. like just cranking them out yep. when, when you have to a, yep. a a ridiculous amount of work just it just makes you better it makes you so Absolutely. much better. Absolutely, I think you know. I worked in a factory for about two years where we I stood at a line and packed materials to put in a box, um, amenities for hotels, you know, soap, bath salts. Uh, you know, inserts you get in magazines, mm. but I think the monotony of that job, and and as long as as long as I did it, kind of helped me in the monotony of work, doing multiple paintings at mm, once, and, right. and not you know what I mean, and being able to stay focused and and on course. Right, that makes sense. I, I'm going to ask you this technical question that I was going to save for later, just because you're talking about doing 52 portraits in a month or whatever it was. Uh, so when you're doing those portraits for illustration jobs, what was your approach to, were you painting from reference and just eyeballing it? Because I know you're really good at that. Or were you like tracing, doing the illustration thing where you trace the 
Tr trace in the beginning, it on, I was drawing more, and then I would sometimes trace things. Um, but uh, you know, all those jobs, not that job specifically, but most jobs, you get a and uh, you get the assignment Thursday. They want to sketch Friday and a final product on Monday. Sheesh. Um, <laughs> depending on what it is, you know, I'm either drawing it or tracing the head and making up the figure. Wow. Like that was a lot of what I, a lot of what I was doing. Uh, and in the beginning it was, I was working in acrylic. Oh, okay. Uh, be, because of speed and efficiency, right. they, needed, they needed a high res file. Um, so I work in acrylics because they'd be dry and I could flatbed scan them. Mm. Uh, this is 99, 2000, 2001. And I slowly transitioned into working in the oil um, and putting my paintings in the oven. Um, so they would dry faster <laughs> using dryers. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, the digital cameras, the quality of those excelled over time. So at some point I just started just taking photos of paintings and sending those as my high res files. Mm. So it didn't matter if I had a dry painting or not. Right. Right. Wow. That's interesting. So was there a point where that kind of took over? The commercial work because it was more lucrative no. or how did how did it I'm, I'm basically asking you how how you how your career oh, d developed from there i was doing all three i was teaching i was teaching at ringling um i started a, a teacher in the foundation program got sick mid-semester and they knew i had some experience from pre-college and i started teaching uh foundation drawing and then i got hired to teach in the illustration program and i did that for a little bit mm -hmm. um but I wanted to make art and show in galleries. Uh, I think the first, I did a couple group shows. And then the first sh like solo show I did was um, maybe 2003 at C-Pop in Detroit. I don't know if you remember that place. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, that was like a lowbrow pop surrealism gallery. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and that was with the doll paintings. Oh, okay. And then soon after that, uh, Josh Liner... And Bradley Stengel had a gallery in Philadelphia called Lineage. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and I did a couple shows there and then, you know, started trying to show out West. And then eventually I moved to San Francisco and uh, had a, I mean, I'm getting ahead of it, but it's okay. Um, had an art studio above a gallery called White Walls, mm -hmm. which had, shooting gallery was already there. Um, and I was showing with them. And then they opened white walls and uh, I mean, a lot of things changed then. Yeah, I bet. So, so were you, okay. So you obviously, when you moved out to California, you left the, the, the teaching gig. So in California, you were still kind of doing the, uh, um, the fine art and the uh, yep. uh, 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 commercial work. Yep. In, in about 2003, I got a commercial agent. So I had an illustration agent. Cool. um after about two years in and she helped me a lot that must have been nice to work it was cool uh she took 30 percent yeah which i think was pretty standard um must be nice nice to not have to hustle work all the time though you still don't know when you're gonna get it <laughs> yeah uh okay. but when i when i moved to san francisco my intention was to still try to teach mm. Okay. You know, and I put some feelers out and after about six months, I started teaching at CCA and then I taught a, a class at Academy of Art. So I started teaching pretty soon after I moved there. Oh, okay. Okay. So, wow. You were yeah. teaching there too. Yep. Damn. So. I'm and then the, tat the tattooed portraits started right before I moved to San Francisco. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Huh. Okay. Uh, I'd done, I done a self-portrait and some paintings from some friends. And then I visited the city with the interest of moving there and just went to t some tattoo shops and met some icons of the community and, and started painting them. And then, and this is before you start tattooing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Wow. Interesting. Yep. I didn't realize you were painting. I thought you, uh, for some reason, I always thought the paintings came after you started tattooing. No, I started tattooing when I was 35. Oh, wow. Yep. Started getting tattooed in 86 um you know consistently getting tattooed over the years but i wasn't i wanted to be an inker and then i'm a painter you know like tattooing wasn't it wasn't even a consideration right you know? and and up until i got you know like a 
half sleeve and a sleeve, I was like, oh, tattooing is its own art form. Like I didn't know anything. Right. I was I was hy hyper focused on being an inker and then hyper focused on being a painter. Right. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I started doing the tattoo shows um, for my art, my paintings and stuff is when I started learning about tattooing and, and, you know, I had all these amazing tattooers show, you know, explaining to me what a good tattoo was. Yeah. You know? Cause they would ask yeah, me to yeah. like judge be on judge on panels for, for tattoo contests. Sure. And I didn't even know what, you know, I would think something was good. And then the guy would be like, no, that's, that's not going to last. It's too light. It's not going to, mm. it's going to fade. Um, yep, or yep, yep. this one's good because it's going with the flow of the muscles and the anatomy. Mm -hmm. And so I really started, it really opened my eyes to it. You don't really think about it. Uh, or it's I its own art form. For yeah, sure. for sure. And totally different than any other art form. It's so weird. It's so oh, unique, yeah. you know, but, but, um, what, well, you're, you're, you're essentially working on a tone surface, tone canvas. Right. And the tone of the canvas is dictated by the person's flesh. Right. Color. Right. You know, so if that's your base coat, that's your highlight. Right. You know, so and you black is your darkest tone. What's the contrast in between the skin tone and black? Like if yeah. somebody's pretty dark, you, you know, you, you want to basically have skin, a mid tone and a black tone. Right. And then the lighter, you know, your flesh is, you can kind of do a range of values in between those values. Right. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, it it was it was cool to learn. You know, once I, I I started learning about that, I was able to look at tattoos and be like, "Oh, that's a that's a good tattoo. Oh, that's not a very sure, good tattoo." Sure, just the sure, way it's sure. like, you know, you can tell one's just like stuck on in a random sure, spot, and then sure. you see other ones that are like, "Wow, that really flows and it moves sure. when the person moves their arm." But, but tattoos are, you know, they're they're also so much more than even the aesthetics of it. They're they have their charm. They have their, mm -hmm, true, yeah. You know, if your your parent or 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 you know somebody you care about has like put some chicken scratch on you, that's got some power. To absolutely, it as well. yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's a good point. And uh, and and you know, I think there's even kind of like an aesthetic of people just putting stuff all over without a lot of thought <laughs> to where it goes. Sure, and sure. that's its own kind of style. You know what sure, I mean? Sure, sure, sure. Just like filling everything in. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lyle Tuttle calls it, called it stickers, stickers on your luggage. You know? <laughs> these, these are, these are ma great. markers for the passage in time and yeah. around the world, you know? That's so interesting. Okay. So you're, 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 you, uh, I'm guessing you during this time where you're building your career, you are, you, you must not have been doing anything else except working. I mean, um, I brought a bicycle, <laughs> but I mean, you weren't like partying and stuff. It doesn't sound like, I was always, how, no, I was, how would you have I time was, for I was a that? heavy drinker for, for a while. And then I, I slowed that down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a balance, right? It's yeah. Like yeah. Do, doing it. Um, when the time was right, or if there's an event or, you know, you're out with friends, but, um, yeah, not getting inebriated so you can't work. Right, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. But I mean, I, even just to the point of like going and doing things. I mean, how do you, that's a lot of work to be doing constantly. I, I, think, <laughs> I think for me, I'm a, I'm good at multitasking and I think I, I'm good at shifting gears. Like I can mm. change my focus from one thing to the next on a dime. Really? Right? Yeah, hmm. uh, I think it's a, a good skill set that I do have. Mm -hmm. um, there's some pros and cons to that, but I think there's more pros because I can just be more efficient. You know, like yeah. if I'm uh, working on an exhibition, say I'm working on 10 to 15 paintings, I might also be doing a bunch of commissions and, you know, other other works and tattooing, uh, maybe teaching a little bit. It's just delegating time on the schedule to you know in the in a day that is a um, skill and it requires discipline to stick yeah, to it yeah you know yep yep and i you know I, i'm fortunate that i have a partner that understands my obsession with needing to do these things mm -hmm. you know and yeah. she's not trying to 
she wants me to be a healthy person, but she's not trying to dictate how I live my life or, you know, impede, impede the progress of, um, that, that I need for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Kim's awesome. Yeah. She's, she's, great, she's a great person. Yeah. She's cool. Uh, okay. So, okay. I'm, I, I just want to like get through your career and then we Do can it. just start talking about all right, sorry, everything man. else. No, that's all, no good. It's just, I've been all over, you know, I've had <laughs> I know, so many different like... life experiences. That it's, I don't, I don't know. It's cool. It's cool. It's very interesting. Um, so, I guess the next phase, you know, were you, uh, how did you do in, in fine art? How were, how were the shows and stuff? Um, you know, I think I did pretty good with the, with those doll paintings. I would, you know, to oh, this day, great. everything I've made uh, out of those, I think I have maybe three of them. Oh, cool. Yeah. Like I moved all of them. Wow. Like, they all either sold immediately or eventually sold. Like mm-hmm. I, yeah, those, I think if I kept at it, I could still move them. I'm just not, my head's not into that subject matter. Right. You know, I'm hyper focused on documenting my community, and that's pretty much all I want to do. Right. So you okay? So uh, uh, you were getting. I, I I guess my point, the point I'm getting at, is that you were getting uh, enough positive response from your fine art that you were like, okay, I'm going to keep doing this. It's like there is a yes. mar- there is a market for it. Yeah. People yep. like what I'm doing. And not, yeah, not, you know, not making great income, but making enough to survive and, right. you know, have a life that wasn't completely stressful. Right. Yeah. Still had a lot of debt, but. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how, where does the, t- the tattooing, how does the tattooing come in? Um, well, I moved to San Francisco and I had an art studio above that gallery and one of my um studio mates was a tattooer Mm. uh and you know he we encouraged each other and helped helped each other out a lot um henry lewis Mm. you know okay yeah yeah and he he encouraged me he's like why the fuck are you not tattooing i'm like uh 35 i'm an art teacher i'm doing illustration i'm painting like where am i gonna fit that in i was married i was also married at the time oh okay you know i did my best to spend as much time with my wife at that time. And um, like, how does that fit in? Um, But he encouraged it. And he asked a mutual friend of ours who he had worked for, you know, Mike Davis. Mike's a painter, musician. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. He he was working for Mike at the time. He's a a big time guy, right? Mike, he's like big successful dude. Mike Davis, right? Yeah. He's like a big name. Yeah. Mike's a well-known, well-known painter, well-known tattooist. Yeah, Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, he happens. made a he made a book in maybe two thousand eight nine with Last Gasp. Uh, right, right. Yeah, I've seen yeah. like interviews with him and stuff. Yeah, Mike's a Mike is a he's good at everything. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a Renaissance Renaissance man. Oh, for that's sure. cool. Yeah. So, continue <laughs> with how you got tattooing. Oh. <laughs> Well, yeah. So Henry encouraged it, and Mike uh, gave me an opportunity. So I I quit teaching. So he did he give you like, like a, an a apprenticeship type thing? Or? He did. Yep. Like a yep. okay. It was, you know, I I did the best that I could with the time and energy that I had. Um, Mike showed me all different kind of things. He showed me how to draw for tattoos. He showed me how to make needles. He showed me how to build a machine from you know. A box of parts he showed me um how to deal with clients he he showed me all different kinds of things hmm. wow uh, and in the shop his shop like everybody that worked there also gave me all their resources and tried to help me with anything that i asked for um you know at the same time i was you know showing all these guys painting things and right you know at that at the at the time that all of these things happened it was so much information coming in and then i was traveling to document tattoo artists and getting tattooed by different people and every single person had a completely different idea on how to make a tattoo Mm. and how to do all the things so i was like oh no there's (laughs) way too many cooks in the kitchen and uh it took me you know i was tattooing i mean i still kind of i've been a part-time tattooer for you know 17 years 
Right. Um, it's been a slow road. It took about 10 years to be like, okay, I feel good about this. And, right. You know, I'm, I'm, I feel like I have my style and, you know, point of view and all those things, but you know, it's still, it's not my, <clears throat> my singular passion. You're right. But yeah. it's a, but it's a passion. I know you're it's a passion. Uh, Cause I know. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I know when, um, I was talking to you years ago because I was like teetering on the edge of, yeah, of learning to do that. it, and uh, and I and I remember you were just like so into tattooing, like you just you just love. I mean, it's it. an exciting <laughs> art. It's it's like any art form. Yeah, there's no end to what you can learn in it. So mm -hmm. it's like you know, as long as my hands, hand, eyes, shoulder, body can can maintain, like I would like to tattoo forever. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily as a you know in the as i get older as a job to make money but just to to get to to progress mm -hmm. like i'm interested in learning i'm interested in trying new things i'm interested in the individuals i like people you know tattooing mm -hmm. is a it's a social social job where you get to learn about people and you know affect them in hopefully positive ways yeah absolutely uh yeah that's the the that's one of the things that I, I the, one of the pills I, f I found hard to swallow because art making for me has always been, and this goes back to being a kid to where, you know, when I, when, you know, my family was all fighting and falling apart, I would just like completely go inward and I would get lost sure, in my drawing. Sure. And that just became kind of like, a, a, a pattern my entire life and not not in a negative way even it's like i'm really comfortable being alone um and, sure. cr and creating and and me too you know and uh you, it's it it requires a certain skill to um you know interact with people while you're creating artwork yes you yes know? and it can be it can be a challenge if you have somebody who um has bad ideas can't sit still right. can't handle the pain like whatever the variables are yeah there's a lot there's a lot of variables you don't get yeah with an oil painting <laughs> that yep. you get with tattooing yep and you know you're dictated by whatever the schedule of that person right. and all of those parameters their budget their pain threshold you know um i would tattoo more if you know people would sit longer and and I have mm. more work, but I just don't. So, yeah. um, you know, I'm, I paint every night. Oh, do you? Oh yeah. Yeah. 20, yeah. Since 99, not every day, but nearly every day, unless I'm traveling nearly every day, I'm putting my hand in paint. Yeah. Since then. That was my, my dad was the same way. He would paint it every, I think he painted aside from traveling for shows, he would paint every single day. Yeah. Every I Sunday, I love it. Saturday, a, Sundays. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's therapeutic. It's you can get lost in it. The time goes away. Like there's just it's so it's fun. Doing that thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's so much fun. It's it's hard to explain to people who've never done it or maybe who aren't even interested, but it's just so much fun. And ulti ultimately that's why I didn't get into tattooing because I was so mm -hmm. close and I was really felt like I was starting to get that bug that I know that, you know, you, a lot of tattoo artists I've talked to talk about where they get that bug where it's like they start oh, really yeah. feeling like they got to do it. Oh, yeah. And I was, man, I was right there. And I, and I just kind of was, you know, it was the time thing. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm sure I was older than you. I think when at that point that, 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 that uh, older than you, when you started yeah, yeah, tattooing yeah. and there was the time thing and there was the people thing <laughs> And there sure. was, and there was the, uh, like, I, I just felt like, I feel you also like, no, you're not, you're not going to crush it out of the gates. Exactly. So a, yeah. It's yeah. a, it's a, it's a good fucking serving of humble pie. Yeah, that you have right. to eat for a while, man. And yeah. A, yeah. A long it's time. Go check. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I was, you know, I, I thought a lot about that too. And, um, and I'd already switched careers like yeah. mid, mid career. I had a, a pretty long career in makeup effects in the film industry and it's like and, and i completely got into fine art and but ultimately it was like the deciding factor was i 
I feel so satisfied painting that I don't feel like I need another thing to do. I'm just like, I'm all sure. It's just, sure, I'm, I'm, sure. I'm 100% satisfied. And the only reason I'd really be doing it would be the money. And, and I feel like that's mm-hmm. not really the, the reason you should do something like that. I mean, it's okay. If, a lot of people do it. It's okay. If, a lot. It's I the know. reason why all these young fucking kids are doing it. I mean, and it's fine. It's, it's a legitimate I mean, it's you got to make money. A new illustration job. Yeah, right. Yeah, and you got to make because mo- you can and you can you can forge your own path. Right, right. And yeah. make a living. Yeah, you can make a shitty living. You can make an amazing living. True. Yeah, you and, can and, live wherever you want. Yep. You can travel around the world and tattoo anywhere. Yeah, it's it's amazing in that way. Um, yeah, it's a it's an expansive, very welcoming uh, community like no other art, art form. Yeah. They're really, there's yeah. nothing like and, it. And full of amazing people. I mean, oh, I've yeah. met some just amazing people. Um, but like, uh, I guess I, I, I made the decision because I was kind of like waffling. And um, the la- the final thing was just like, I, uh, uh, um, the, 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 the main reason was, would have been because of the money. And I was like, that's, you know, I'm too old to be, I don't know. I just felt like I didn't want to distract. I was getting my, my sure. fine art career was really, I, I could see where it was going and, and I just felt totally satisfied and I didn't want the, the deciding factor to be the money because I gave up a really good job making good money and effects so that I could paint, you know sure, what I mean? Sure, sure. No, I get that. But, uh, I came close and I did tattoo some people. I tattooed enough to know. Did how- you tattoo yourself? No. No. <laughs> no i didn't i didn't even think to tattoo myself or no I pro- i'm sure i thought of it but it was like when i was at tattoo conventions and someone would be like hey tattoo me you know yeah yeah, yeah. i remember that i tattoo i did like i don't know three tattoos or five tattoos and it's like a couple of them looked pretty good for for dumb little cartoon they looked mm-hmm. like the little cartoon zombie drawings i do and then a couple of them were so bad and i was just like man this is so hard yeah it was hard you know what's 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 interesting i think if you were if you were to take the tools of the present to learning back then you probably would have picked it up even faster what what do you mean uh the machines and um just the the uh the tools that are being made today um are are you don't need to understand how a tattoo machine works right you don't need to understand how to fix it if there's any issues with how it's running you pick it up it fucking goes yeah 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 and you can learn some pretty basic um rules with it in terms of needle depth and you know stretching the skin uh and it's really i think i was was talking to somebody the other day about this tattooing is the act of it's 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 about a confident mind you know oh and yeah yeah if you believe that you're the best even if you're not and you project that confidence in the, the your hand pushing a mark into the body it's gonna look more deliberate than hmm. somebody who's uncertain and yeah right wavering and and fearful of creating a mark on the body mm-hmm. like that deliberate hand can have a lot of power to it yeah that makes sense there's a you know do you know the artist harley brown i don't uh you got to get this book harley brown the Asc- harley brown's right essential truths for every artist he's really cool he's okay a, he was on the podcast he's he's probably okay. probably in his late 70s at this point really oh, really shit. great no, guy no clue. yeah he's okay. he's a guy i was turned on to by a friend of mine in fx back in the day and he's just, you know, just a great painter, just knows his shit. Cool. And, and that book is, cool. is awesome. But um, one of the things he says in his book is he's like, the first thing I do is just like throw some paint on the canvas, show, show, show the canvas. Who's the boss? <laughs> kind of like, yeah, just yeah, get yeah. something on there yeah, so that you're not sitting there going like, oh, I don't want to touch it. Yeah. I don't want to do something. Get to it. <laughs> yeah. And it's like this kind yeah. of attitude of confidence. In a way, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean, that, yeah, that really makes. It well, it, it's interesting to see a lot of like tattooer in in. I, I guess because I was teaching more in the past to tattooers who hadn't painted much, they have the confidence in creating a tattoo on the body that is permanent, but they would be fearful of <laughs> yeah, putting right. mark on the canvas. It's like, what the fuck? 
This is the opposite. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you should be completely fearless. Right, right. Like, no, you don't have to show anybody. Yeah, yeah. You can wipe it off. You can start over. You can throw it away. Like, you can paint over it. Like, yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> There's no that is end. Funny. That is funny. Uh, yeah, that's one thing I I, uh, I love about tattooers also is that um, most tattooers I know just love painting and they love painters. They love you know they're they're into it they're oh, into, yeah. they're into art you know yep. and and uh yep. until i never really i guess i never i was never really into the tattoo community until until i started going to these conventions and, and realizing these were like you know huge art fans and and, and oh yeah really um really uh 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 what's the word i'm looking for they're really uh uh enthusiastic passionate yeah passionate i guess passionate about um uh the the about art making about the techniques Absolutely. of art making Absolutely. and um um well they, you know they're doing it every day so i think if you're cr practicing a artistic craft every day yeah yeah you appreciate they're, they're, other forms you're you're hopefully seeing some kind of progress e even if it's not you know if it's over time mm -hmm. um and that's exciting. So, you know, tattooing is for a lot of people, a commercial job, you know, and, and to be able to make something, whether it's flash or imagery that you could potentially tattoo on somebody's body or your own personal art, like that's something that you're doing that doesn't require having somebody sit there to put it on their body. Right. Right. I'm and sure you can, do the, you can, you can pick at it, you know, you can think about it. You can, right. All the things I'm going to turn this off. Oh, okay, no problem. I'm sure at this point, um, now that you are established, you have a reputation, you have a style, everyone knows you. You you, you get um, less input, I'm guessing, from your clients. As far as do you get? I get all of it. I do everything. <laughs> I I take on all different kinds of projects. Yeah, you seem um, like you just like to do that, though. You, you like the challenge do. of doing yeah, I mean, all I like kinds people. of different things. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to, you know, if somebody wants what they want, I might help direct them into better imagery to fulfill their needs. But, you know, who am I to tell somebody what they shouldn't get tattooed right. on their body if it, if yeah, it looks true. okay? Right. It's like it's not my body. Right. True. Um, But I, you know, I would, in an ideal situation, I would love to be able to just kind of tattoo more of the things that I'm into. Right. Um, but I, I haven't facilitated that as much, you know, if I was to focus my career entirely on tattooing, then I could, I could lean into that. It, you know, it's, it's just, that's how it goes. Like yeah. whatever you want, the more time and energy you spend towards it, the more you get it. Right. Yeah. Um, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. You seem like a very blue collar kind of dude. Yep. You know, yep. and that's, yeah, it's my upbringing. That's my family. That's, yeah. Same here. Yep. Uh, people don't, you know, I remember one, one time on, on Facebook, someone uh, insulted me by saying <laughs> uh, it was, I forget what I posted and someone said, oh yeah. Second generation painter from a from, uh, uh, who had a father as an artist growing up in California. Yeah. I'm sure you're really blue collar. And I'm like, this guy, it, it was like, because I was uh, an he's artist trying to, he's trying to give you a dig. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I was some kind of elitist. Like, what does that even mean? Like what I was some elitist because my dad was an artist and I'm an right. artist. It's like, you don't even know what it's like to be an artist. It's, it, it's, sure. you know, it's mo most artists are like blue collar people. They're like working people and they yeah. struggle financially and they work their asses off. It's not Absolutely. like people think. It's like people have this view of artists. Like everyone just goes, "Yeah, I'm gonna create when I feel like it." And it's like it's yep. so not like that. It's like any yeah. hard ass job. Yeah, you, you must know? be. Somebody said to me years ago, "They're like, you're not a millionaire." I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't have any money. What do you mean? <laughs> Great life, but I don't have yeah, any right. money. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I. I uh... I remember one time I was working on when I was working on in the mo movie business and I was just kind of getting my I, I I worked 
I was building my fine art career while I was in the effects industry. So it was like a seven, seven year uh, overlap to where I was working in make, uh, makeup effects 40 hours a week and then painting after work and on weekends for seven years. I was doing that to build my career and I started to get somewhat of a name. And then I saw on a message board when I was working on the Fantastic Four movie, someone said, oh, I heard Chet Zars working on that. I wonder how much he's making. And someone was like, yeah, probably like 500000 <laughs> That's hilarious. And I was that's like, oh hilarious. my God, <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. I've never seen $500,000 before. <laughs> right? That would be nice. Yeah, it's like, if only. That's hilarious. Yeah. So you... um. You know, yeah, you, you've just done so well for yourself, and uh, uh, you got this studio that I'm so envious of. You've got Thanks, this, man. We've um, got a pretty beautiful uh, workspace. Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. Um, Thank you. And Thank it's you. haunted on top of it. It sure is. Well, it was. I don't know if the still is. <laughs> We're too nice, man. Yeah. They, they, they're like, yeah, you're good. We don't need to scare you. <laughs> Killed that was the kindness. beginning. Yeah, that was the beginning. What what were you what was happening? Were you getting what was happening in there? Um, I mean, you know, we we could figure out reasons why some things happen, like the water would be running or, mm. you know, it would be sounds or the feeling of like, you know, things moving around. Mm -hmm. uh, they they definitely the the prior tenant had talked about ghosts and, you know, I it's, think you 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 were there at that time. Uh yeah, I, I yeah, yeah. Uh it's an old building. There was, there was in the 1920s. There was yeah. definitely something happening, and then it wasn't. Okay, so you you just uh, you, you're not getting stuff anymore. Any? No, it was the first two three years, and then it was just gone. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. I wonder what happened. I I think that the former tenants were probably a bunch of fucking assholes. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's their you know, their energy. Of, yeah. Uh, I, I, and I'm, you know, I'm projecting. Uh, it, our <laughs> space used to be the um, storage and uh, kind of hangout space for the pussycat dolls. <laughs> and one of the girls who was in that group, her mom had a furniture store downstairs. Okay. And she, I think she she had this space upstairs to keep an eye on her daughter. And they, like, whitewashed everything. Like, the floors are painted white. Fucking, they plastered over the old brick oh like they my just God. Put this, this like ugly white box and um you know we started chipping back and stripped the floors and pulled the plaster away and just kind of brought the the life of the building back and i think the building is just probably happier because of it yeah true yeah yeah it's an amazing it's just the ultimate the ultimate uh studio it's so so cool thanks man. it's got a good vibe too it's just great thanks. Memoir tattoo. Yeah, memoir tattoo. That's right. Yes. We are on uh Beverly Boulevard in Martel in Los Angeles, California. One block away from Blick Arts. Cool. And El Coyote. <laughs> I I I sent, you know, I've I've, you know, uh, people people have asked. I've sent people Thanks, your way man. before. I appreciate I don't it. Know we appreciate they... it. We <laughs> yeah, appreciate of course. It. Of course. Um yeah. Yeah, so okay. Now you're a successful tattooer, successful painter. You got this amazing studio, amazing partner. Everything's good for you. Everything's sure. great. Everything's going. You got a pretty great life. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we yeah. don't own a home. Okay, well, but we live in a city where you know it's hard. It's a hard thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, but you know, you pretty much got everything else. Yes. So, yes. Uh, I. You know, you're one of those people, and I've I've had maybe one or two other people I can think of off the top of my head that are like this. You're one of those people that I've never heard anybody say a bad word about you. Like, you're known for being... I'm sure it happens. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I, you know what? I've, I've got, I got some backlash early on in painting tattooed folks, and that was interesting. Oh, well, well, that was really interesting. Why? Because it's like not your place. To, um, to... There was a guy in Florida. This is a good artist who tattooed in the town that I was in, in Sarasota. Um, he was 
friend, acquaintance. Um, and, uh, you know, I had moved to San Francisco and then I was painting tattooed folks. And uh, I, you know, I was on an episode of Miami Inc. And then I was on a couple of episodes of Ellie Inc. And I know at this time, you know, like probably in that town in Florida, there were stu ex students of mine who were probably like fucking talking me up or just, you know, saying like oh it's amazing what he's doing or what, whatever they were saying but he sent me a really snarky message like i can't believe that you went straight for the throat of tattooing and how dare you fucking do that and this is oh, a guy who, who you know isn't on the island doesn't engage in the community thinks that he's better than everybody and uh, i'm like you know what dude you're wrong and these are the reasons why right and i think you're saying this because of these situations and you know what? No. You know, and years later, uh, I invited him to be a group show. Like, I don't take, you can say whatever you want. It's not going to affect me. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you well, know, because I know who I am. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. If you think that, you don't know me. So fuck yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is kind of the point I was getting at is, is, is uh, the reason nobody. I've ever heard anybody say a bad word about you. Everybody loves you. Everyone, everyone, everyone I talk to that knows you says Sean Barber's super cool, amazing guy. And, Thanks. um, and, and, and it's true. It's absolutely true. I can, cheers. Um, <laughs> I can attest to that. And, <laughs> um, I'll drink to that. And so I was curious, is this like, just, is this in your nature? Are you, have you always been like, a nice person like this, like a kind hearted uh, person. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of like who you are. Sure. I as, think so. Even as a, as a kid. And uh, as a kid, I was a uh, man growing up. I was a 90 pound weakling. I was scared oh, really? of my own shadow uh, in my teens. You were shy. Were you shy? Super shy. Okay. Uh, I wasn't athletic. Um, you know, I, I had a, a crew of degenerate friends who skateboarded and BMXed. Mm -hmm. um and you know we partied and did all those things but you know in my early teens if somebody would look at me funny i would cry wow yeah and i got picked on a lot i got wow. bullied a lot okay and then i think ninth or tenth grade this kid in homeroom that you know was sit behind me you know every year he would like flick my ears or do fucking throw yeah. shit at me or whatever he took masking tape and like wrapped it around my forehead oh my god and i just blacked out turned around and beat the crap out of him. Oh, um, good. <laughs> and that, you know, that changed some things. Mm -hmm. Like I definitely gained confidence that day. And then <laughs> throughout the years, you know, um, I've definitely gained a lot of confidence, um, but not in a, in a arrogant way. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I'm an intuitive person. I'm an emotional person. I'm okay being an emotional person. Um, you know, I have, nice parents who you know they separated when i was 12 but you know they're still friends with each other and mm. you know i had a decent upbringing in a in a small town where you knew everybody and um you know it wasn't a bad upbringing you know i could ride a bicycle everywhere this is a different time too where you yeah your parents didn't care where you were and yeah so you're yeah you just you had to be, be back by dinner. dark yeah be, yep. <laughs> be home for dinner and you're off yep doing yeah, whatever was, the hell you there was want. no internet there was no cell phones there was no distractions other than getting lost in being a, a young person exploring your surroundings right you know and it's super fortunate to have grown up in that time and place yeah yeah I, i've talked about this so many times on the podcast just what it was like growing up in the 70s and it was like oh man you yeah know, uh, it was i get I, I skate i skated a little bit but but I never got, I was never like a skater because I was like a BMXer. That was my yep, thing. Me too. Oh, really? Yep. Yep, yeah. Yep. So, so we would, you know, it was like, you know, no helmets, building ramps. Oh, yep. You know, maybe with a pair of shorts on, no shoes, no shirt, just like doing these <laughs> jumps and stuff, building jumps on the street and just like, it just, it was so much fun. It was really so much fun. But, yeah, there's a sense of freedom and a sense of uh exploring the unknown yeah absolutely yeah there was a there was a a sewer a, an open sewage 
pipe or that went, you know, it wasn't like shitty sewage. It was just You're, like this a, is San Pedro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an open pipe at the end bottom of this canyon we used to go into and it was called hell like someone spray painted hell so we'd call it hell and nice. we just would walk in there and you'd hear the cars it was so scary and people had like spray painted pictures did of that influence your art oh it was uh <laughs> i don't know if that influenced my art or i was into that because i was i was already at that point into horror like i was into comics okay. too when i was okay. a kid but it was like horror comics Okay. I was in a monster movies just from the youngest age, probably five years old. I was watching horror movies and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, we used to go, I can't even imagine like, cause I got grandkids now. Sure. And it's sure. like, I would never, <laughs> ever let them. And they're like, uh, I think the cost of health insurance is a little different now. Too. Yeah, true. Yeah. I used to get <laughs> stitches once a year. That was the thing. Yeah. It was like once a year, I'd have to go and get stitches. It was like, just kind of like not a big deal. Never broke a bone, but I always had to get stitches uh, just from falling down and stuff. Yep. But we used to go down there and we'd go so far under the, under in this huge sewer pipe that was just like, you know, you know, kids had been down there. You could tell. And it was so scary pitch black and uh you know i don't even know if my parents ever knew we did it you know we sure. just spend they the do day now yeah <laughs> well no mine don't because they're dead but <laughs> oh both parents are passed away what's that both your parents are gone yeah yeah actually okay. all three because i have a stepdad okay yeah my stepdad died like it was the classic like a year after my mom died okay you know just like died of a broken heart basically oh yeah 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 really sad but he was totally ready to go you know gotcha. yeah yeah he was like he wasn't bummed he was like a, he was the krishna murdy guy he meditated every nice. every day nice and um so he was super very spiritual and he wasn't afraid at all to die so nice um so how about you do you do you are you into spirituality at all or you, you, no, you no. Mm. you're kind i mean, I mean you just... I, I I think I've had you know in my in my twenties I did a shit ton of acid. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> That's what, yeah. Acid. And it just <laughs> it flipped my fucking lid to the point of no return. And you know, and I I don't I don't ever need to do it again. Yeah, it's right. Like, you know, it's like oh, everything is nothing, and nothing is everything, and nothing. You know, yeah. <laughs> all those things. Um, <laughs> And, and I, you know, I think, you know, going back to what you were talking about a little bit earlier, I think because I've experienced more in my life than I could have ever imagined, I'm content. Right. Yeah. Like, what's next? Right. And if nothing's next, I'm good. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I, I have I, I have nothing to complain about. Yeah. You know, it's too, it's eat, like the world's out of control. There's chaos everywhere that it, you know, everybody's at each other's throats online and, mm -hmm. you know, like the world is dividing itself for who knows what reasons. And like, you can engage in that, you can pay attention to it, or you can just ignore it and be and be happy. Right. And I'm, you know, more often than not just choosing to like embrace the, the, the day to day and just, you know, have fun making art and being nice to people. It's kind of a Zen. Pretty easy. Yeah, yeah, I know. Pretty it's easy. A, <laughs> how hard is it to be nice? So I say easy. that all the time. It's like, you know, because I, because it I, takes I, a lot of work to be an asshole. I know. I, I, I've heard, I've heard, you know, people like I have a reputation for being a nice person also and, and talking to people like they don't expect me to like I'm some big time, big artist or something right like mm -hmm. and they expect me to be have an attitude and uh and i've never have been like that i've never been like that none of the people that i ever looked up to were like that yeah They're like punk rock musicians like mike watt people like this that are just like yeah they, you know uh no one i ever looked up to was like that and so it just it never resonated yeah. with me to be like that and um what did, what does it get you? Just get you more chaos and more sadness. I don't understand more... it. I don't I don't get it because that's my attitude. Is like how hard is it to be kind to people? It's easy, 
you know, but I, I say, I think some people will thrive in chaos and they can't live without being chaotic. You yeah. Know, I think, and, and I don't know if that's a chemical thing yeah, or that's, a, that's what I was going to say. Ego thing, or I don't know. It's, but it's, a. uh, um, it's just, uh, you know, a lot of people are really angry, you know, yeah. they have this kind of unchecked anger, I think. And I think, you know, anger makes you act that way towards people and treat them shitty. And I'm not angry. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Cause sure. I'm happy too. So, sure. you know, maybe that's well, part of it. I mean, I think people that are angry aren't, aren't necessarily, this is a, uh, uh, I guess they're not necessarily interested in getting to the core of why they're angry. Yeah. Right. They're, they're just in that headspace and trying to like figure out how to not be in the headspace or maybe not. They're just fucking miserable. So I know. Yeah. Just miserable. Yeah. I know people that are like kind and, of, and maybe they, maybe they haven't interacted with people that have been pleasant to them. Right. You know, maybe their circumstances are so atrocious that yeah, yeah, they they're... have reasons to be angry. They're in pain. You know, but, he, but even in, in those cases, like you can choose to not focus on the negative. I think it's, it's a, it's a, it's an active choice. It's yeah. Like, what, are, what are you going to choose to focus on? Right. Yeah. I know some people, or I have known some people in my life that are like, addict i feel like addicted to anger like they're addicted to the rush of getting in an online argument i've had sure. them tell me that like like it makes them feel good to, that that uh, adrenaline rush when they're mm. in an argument with someone maybe it makes them feel like they have a voice yeah right yeah people are fucked up people are fucked up but but it's easy to break somebody down yeah true you yeah it's like I don't know. It's kind of lazy. It's yeah. Lazy, yeah. Lazy mindset. Hard, to, hard to be creative and create things that are cool and it's easy to destroy things. Oh yeah. It's just kind of the nature of reality. Yep. So do you have any, uh, shows? Are you planning on any solo shows or anything? Um, I just had an exhibition in, uh, March. It ended April 15th. Uh, I worked with a new gallery for the first time um called raking light gallery where's um, that they were in echo park i did their first exhibition in their new space they moved to west hollywood mm. um, they've been a print house for about a dozen years uh working exclusively with tattooists oh cool and for about a year and a half they've been exhibiting tattooists and they asked me a while ago to do something and i was like yeah fuck it i'll i'll tr i'll take a chance um, you know, Carl and I and Coro had an exhibition at Copro last year, mm -hmm. which was a culmination of pre-pandemic to, you know, just getting out of that. And that was three years of hyper focus on everything and finally being it, be able to show it. Right. Um, so that exhibition's over with, and now I'm, you know, the next day I started new things. Uh, <laughs> I have I have three new things going uh, for the next show. Carl and I are going to do something with Copro again. Oh, great! Excellent. Yeah, we don't we don't have a confirmed date. I talked to him the other day, and um, he's good to go. So we just have to talk to Gary and Erica, and um, yeah, we have to talk to Garica and <laughs> figure out a future date. But probably probably twenty four. Cool. Uh, and the the exhibit i just had was mostly portraits more studies than anything i think showing with a new gallery i i try to make s some smaller works mm -hmm. plus it was it was about you know 11 months of work so i just you know i had taken on commissions and finished those up and did some commercial work so it was like well what can i do in this amount of time and now i'm leaning into doing less portrait based stuff and some still lifes and some landscapes some cityscapes and uh i'm gonna get looser and get tighter like i'm gonna really fucking play um i'm that's, stoked that sounds exciting and i have you know i have just from documenting tattooing since 05 i have so many so much res digital resource of ideas and imagery that you know i, I already i have 
probably a dozen images ready to go, whether they're an idea or a drawing on paper or a composition that's ready for this next exhibition. So it's just figuring out how to tie it all together mm. and like filter in a couple things that aren't there that I want to do that I think will either flesh out the show or just be, you know, things that I've been wanting to do that I haven't done. There's, there's always that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Always, always that. Yeah, I've yep. got I've got one. I took this year off so I could get caught up because I got so many commissions and just stuff mm -hmm. that I had to take on that just got I just got out of hand and and yeah. I and I got to I got to get I feel like I got to get it out of my life so I can move on with my life because I have so many things I want to do. Yeah, um, it's nice. To, it's nice to have closure. Yeah, yeah. So that's what this year is all about. So this year's kind of like the, the boring year for me. I can't do anything really okay. fun. I have to just like get caught up with things that are. Yeah, but it'll it'll be good for your. Oh head. yeah, yeah. Every time I cross something off the list, I'm like, ah, oh, feels so good. Yeah. How are you making that list? What do you mean? You have a list, a list of things you're working on. Is it a list on papers? Oh yeah, it's just like computers? a. I got a uh, like a oops, a uh, word document. I, it's funny. It's like written all over. I've got one on the wall. I've got a yep. word document. I just like yep. I can't yep, keep. Yep, yep. It's hard to keep track of yep. everything. I, I'm the same. I have the. <laughs> I have it on um ruling paper i have it on the computer typed out and then i have a dry erase board that yep. kind of really keep that's what keeps me on task because that's everything i'm working yeah, on. yeah yeah that's what i got too over here um it's all it got all messy though because it's like i keep having ideas for like titles of shows and things like this okay. and i write them down and now it's can all... we see it uh, i can't <laughs> i'm almost i'm all uh oh you're trapped in a yeah i've got like okay. this whole setup with my camera Gotcha, gotcha. But uh, I would, I would show you. I'll take a picture of it and send it to you. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have a, I, I am gonna do a show in 2024, and I would, it's like I, I would love to do a sculpture show. That would be really cool. cool. I don't where's this? At Copro. Cool. That's, that's pretty much that's your, since, that's your place. That's my place since uh, mm -hmm. Last Rites closed up. I don't really have okay. another gallery, and it's cool with me because i don't want to really yeah. go anywhere <laughs> sure 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 i'm like kim sure. you know isn't kim like that yeah. she, she's like a homebody she loves she's a homebody she yeah. loves being home she same loves here yeah it's like yeah she loves she's a routine i remember, person. <laughs> I remember talking to her at a show and she's kind of like you know i just would rather be home and i'm like i yep. could so i could so relate yep, to yep. that yep. <laughs> so i'm happy to just kind of show locally and cool and, and stuff but um uh, I, I, you know, I, I definitely, uh, cause the Copro show for me, the last one that we just had in night, was it 20, what was last year? 22. Mm -hmm. Um, I hadn't exhibited here with like a body of work since 2008. Oh, wow. Damn. That's a long time. And I was, time. yeah, man. I, yeah. Uh, I was like, I need to, I need to exhibit in the town I live in. Right. It's really important for me to continue to do that and i had friends in san francisco and other places that are like offer me opportunities i'm like i would love this opportunity but i i need to like i need to show where i live mm -hmm. and i still i feel like i need to lean into that more and just definitely keep, since you know we've opened up the last year and a half or whatever like i feel more engaged in an artistic community and it feels more how I how I felt when I lived in San Francisco. There was a pretty tight art, mm -hmm. community, you know. And and you're you're part of any community you you engage in. So if you're not engaging in it, you know. yeah, absolutely. And and you know, what, I think I think that kind of hit the um, hit that home uh, during COVID and with the the internet becoming such a cesspool. Is mm -hmm. that your local community? is so important it's really yeah important. wherever you live yeah exactly it's more important than how big you or are in the internet or you're supporting your peers you're yep. you know you're you're celebrating each other and you're um not in a like masturbatory way but just in a hey man we're we're all doing this thing right. we're all pushing we're pushing as hard as we can and me seeing this person push and that person pushes right inspire me to push myself like it's all it's crucial it's crucial, yeah. I think, to to yep. to, be, to getting uh, being a, a good artist, really. You know, yeah, and productive. Yeah, inspired, and, productive. Yeah. Um, so I okay, I want to talk a, a little bit about your uh, technical stuff now. Sure. I love talking shop on here. Uh, I remember 
last time I painted with you, and I don't know if this was at your studio when I was when we were doing the the painting class or if it was at a tattoo show, but you had this technique of you were dipping your brush in solvent and then dipping it in uh oh what's it called? I got some some Galkid slow dry. Galkid. <laughs> Galkid slow dry. Or Galkid. Yeah, or yeah. You were I, or... I think you were using Galkid at the time. You dip your brush in terps, then dip it in the Galkid and then mix it in the paint, I believe. Or okay. maybe it was Galkid, then Terps, then paint. But it was very sloppy and watery. And it mm -hmm. was uh it was very it was, it was washy. Washy, yeah. It was really okay. So I was sketching more? I, it was just like, I just thought it was such a cool way to paint. And I really have never been able to do that. And I just loved it because it was so, you know, for, loose for me, and just for like For me, flowing. typically like the, the beginning stages of any painting is I'm going out of my way to be loose and to get that kind of first pass in the moment where it feels and looks like an all primo where all right, right this is what my hand's doing and depending on size and detail and subject matter like and time frame right so what's the scale of this thing is going to dictate how much if any medium i'm using right you know if i if i know that i have a time crunch and i want it to be dry so i can work in layers i might use certain mediums mm -hmm. or if i'm trying to get the paint to flow a certain way I might use specific mediums. Like it depends on the illusion of, of what we're trying to do with that. Um, right. With that colored clay. So you're, what, what's your, what's your, what technique are you using now with what you're, what you're currently? Um, mostly I'm using paint, oil paint, Gamsol to thin. Mm -hmm. And then if I want some, flow um like some consistent flow where the paint's not wash as washed out uh they they just gal could gambling discontinued gal could slow dry and oh really that. yeah i don't know why they they have gal light and gal um so i use a little bit of gal light um but i cut it with gamsol um and then if i'm you know, if I if if time's no essence, I might use like M gram and co um, mm -hmm. um, in alkyd medium. Um, sometimes I'll use linseed oil. Um, it depends. Yeah, you just um, that's cool though. I mean, that's like that's the I I feel like that's the sign of a a really good artist that you're just. I, I worked with a guy, uh, I bring him up all the time on the show, Mitch Devane, an amazing sculptor. And he was just so good at sculpting. He was he was the best in the whole makeup effects industry. Everybody knew this dude. He was crazy talented. And um, he would always switch things up just to switch yeah. things up. Yep. Just because yeah, he was, yeah, yeah. he'd mastered kind of every yep. way and he would just change his way of doing things. You know, it was like, it really inspired me. This is like, when I started painting around 2000, it really inspired me to change things up and experiment you know, try things it's, new. It's all a means to an end. Like, yeah, you, right. You have an idea of what the end's going to be, and you have an idea of what you want it to look like. So getting there, you can get there in all different ways. Yeah, I yeah. Started, what I started using again? Hold on a second. Okay. I started using this a couple weeks ago, which I hadn't used in a while. It's a Gamblin solvent free gel. That's funny. I just started using that the, it's like, like a, a couple weeks it's ago. It's like too. a Neo Meglip yeah. uh, in consistency. Um, so I've been using I, I have this liquid and Galkid Light. Oh, and Gamsol. Combining all of those? Not necessarily. Oh, okay. Um, but different mediums for different reasons. And then after that first pass, then I'm using a little bit more liquid. Uh, and depending on like the sheen of the surface, I might use uh, for effects, I might use cold wax medium. Um, I might use Zach. I might use all different kinds yeah, of yeah. things. Zach is great for doing really thick stuff. 
Yep. You're the only other person I ever have talked to that, except for the guy that initially recommended Zek to me. You're the only other person I know who's ever mentioned Zek before. I like, I like, I like it for, for full body painting. Yeah. For yeah. building up thicker, thicker layers of paint. Um, it goes so thick and it dries like yep. the next it day. It smells it's good crazy. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there used to be a brand, uh, I, I don't know, it was Winter, Windsor Newton. Uh, do you remember Oleo Pasto? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oleo, they discontinued Oleo Pasto. I never it tried very, it. It was a little b- more buttery than Zek, but mm. it was, I preferred that over Zek. And Zek oh, is really? a little hard, but it. It's pretty stiff. Zek is pretty yeah, stiff. Yeah, yeah. I just cut it with a you know palette knife and a little bit of medium. Yeah, I'll use I'll actually use um, Zek, Galkid, and paint. Hmm. So with the Galkid, it'll help dry a little bit faster. And right. then if I cut that for for flow, I could just you know put a bit of Gamsol in there. And, mm-hmm. uh, and if that's the case, I'll pull out a bigger palette and just like you know mix up pools so it, I have surface to mix paint on. That's cool. Interesting. Yeah, I used I used solvent free gel for the first time on this painting. I mean, it's nothing great. It's just some little. I just had that had a had a notion like I just had to paint cool. something. But yeah, it's cool. like it was the first time I used solvent free because I'm like a liquid guy. It's like okay, I always paint with liquid. It's just so easy and it's a detail it's like a detail medium yeah it, but it really allows you to move move the paint around and it dries the next day and it's like i've built mm-hmm. i've made this kind of technique of where i'm you know painting in layers for the most part but you know i mix it up once in a while but not not like you do but it's interesting the really thick areas kind of have this rubbery feel to it is that with the zek no this is with the uh, solvent free gel Oh, okay. Can you hear that? So you're using it pretty thick. Yep. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not using it. I'm not using a lot of that substance. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I, barely I, dipping my brush in there. Oh, uh, okay, okay. But if was... I'm going for, for like physicality in the paint stroke, mm-hmm. I'll use more paint than anything. Yeah, yeah. And then if I'm really trying to build build up that physical texture, I'll, I'll add the Zek. Right. Yep. So you do you paint uh, with just straight paint? Often, sometimes, very often. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. I've been doing that more too, and it's. Uh, but you know, it's like I I I will mix in liquid, but I will, you know, do later layers with just just straight oil, and it really gives a different. Uh, it's kind of nice. Sometimes is I like sure. the, the feeling of of paint when it when it's not thinned down. Sometimes you know it's got a. It, really uh these are the things when you're teaching people to paint that you can't teach is the feeling well, of pain they have they have to yeah they, they have yeah. to feel it I think, though <laughs> i think i taught in new hampshire last two weeks ago and i think mixing somebody seeing somebody mix whatever they're mixing on their palette mm-hmm. taking their brush and remixing the exact same thing to get to the core of the color they're going for mm-hmm. and to show them the physical texture of that paint. Like a lot of folks who haven't painted much are fearful of mixing up a significant amount of All right. physical paint. Mm-hmm. So just the act of showing them to physically mix a good pile of paint yeah. up, and then to feel how much is on the ferrule of the brush right. and the ferrule of the brush and then put a mark on their painted surface, hand them the brush and say, feel how that is. Yeah, yeah. I found that that's a good way to to, to relate that how to do that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Because there's a lot of things, because I, I do some teaching on my Patreon and it's mm-hmm. like, you know, and it's all online. It's through Zoom. Sure. So I'm, Say, saying it and doing it are two yeah, yeah. Because you, you can say it to your blue in the face. Yeah. And you're, you're not get it. Yeah, yeah. You have to. There's there's a lot of things that you have to feel. You have to do them yourself mm-hmm. and feel what the feeling depending is. depending on the kind of hairs in the brush. Right. You get a different feeling of how it's sitting in those hairs and how it's going to stick to that surface. And it's not even like it's even hard. Like you can't even describe it actually uh, uh, accurately because it's so subtle. Some of the 
the feelings of, you know, you're trying to explain like, I don't know, blending paint or how you apply paint or whatever, but it's like some things are so subtle that they're hard to verbalize. I feel it's like, sure. you kind of like have to do it. And then when you do it, the student will be like, Oh, that's, that's the thing mm -hmm. that I, that he can't quite you're, describe. You're, are you modeling, you're modeling after the paints on the surface also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I, I would assume that you're doing that more because you do come from a sculpture background. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I learned kind of the traditional, you know, burnt umber underpainting or, or earth tone mm -hmm. underpainting and then just kind of build up on top of that and then glaze to shift things where I need to, basically. But, um, uh, you know, I try and play around too. I tried, I was trying, try, I did a couple paintings with those uh, Geneva slow dry paints you ever try those that mark carter nope. guy you gotta check out nope. this guy he's great uh I'm mark, write it down. it's geneva geneva fine arts they they make the most badass easel too i want their easel okay. so bad it's like a custom easels they make but um he's got a really simple uh uh painting technique but it's he's draw mix paint on youtube this is channel and his name is mark carter with a d and um, he has he sells these paints, which is with it just has a slow dry. Um, they're self leveling, so they're they're it's kind of okay. like for his type of painting, which is like he doesn't like a lot of brush strokes, and uh, they take like two weeks to dry. Okay. So they're just like you know you're just going wet into wet forever until you're done with the painting. Okay. It's really it really changed the way. I mean, I just did a couple experiments, but it was like such a different way of painting. They have a lot of linseed oil. Linseed oil it's uh them? no, he uses clove oil. I think it's clove oil. He mixes them in. So they're pre-mixed. So you just paint out mm -hmm. of the tube clove oil. And I think a little bit of lavender oil or something. Okay. And, um, they're interesting. Yeah. It's interesting keeping a painting wet for that long, like mm -hmm. wet, like you just painted it. You know? Yeah, my, my I guess for me in the in the situation like I I took over our dining room a few years ago and we have three Persian cats. Okay. Um, everything's on wheels and has lids on it. And for me to have an open painting for longer than a oh couple yeah of years, yeah definitely dust and hair is going to get in there. That's true. That's Especially true. if it's really thick or sticky. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've had I I get dog hairs in my paintings, mm -hmm. but I just say it's part of the art. Sure, sure. <laughs> I mean you could you can kind of rub them out at the end. <laughs> yeah, pick them out with the tweezers. Yep, yep. Um have you ever tried sculpture? Uh a little bit in high school and then in um uh college before ringling i did a little bit of sculpture we used plasticine mm -hmm. and um is that the oil-based stuff what's yeah, oil-based stuff? Oil the gray plasticine. stuff yeah i mean yeah that's one of them uh i use that a lot i like i liked it it's so much fun yeah it's so much fun if, if uh, you know not that you need another thing to do but um my friend gabe leonard is yeah he's Gabe's a sweetheart yeah he's great he's been sculpting lately and just really digging it and um, nice. it's so much fun. It's like, uh, you know, I've had a hard time choosing between, I, I, I ended up choosing, I wanted to be a sculptor when I started in 2000 and then I switched to painting cause it was just too hard to make. It was expensive cause you had to mold everything and cast everything. And I couldn't, you know, I had to just go to painting cause it was like, I could do paintings faster and sell them. Um, but, sure, sure. but uh, it's really fun if you ever, Get into it someday man maybe someday I'll bring it back. <laughs> i don't know a lot a lot of friends in tattooing have been doing ceramics um and making their own vessels and you know painting on those and that looks really cool but that isn't necessarily something that i'm drawn towards creating i, I would definitely be more interested in sculpting something out of nothing right yeah, into yeah. something that's a thing and not yeah, like figurative a vessel. Sculpture. Yeah. 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 I never, yeah. I never really, I mean, I appreciate uh, ceramics, but 
I never really had the impulse to do ceramics. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm like a, a I, I love, but it's like creating portraits or and clay. Yeah. It's just so yeah. much fun. Yeah, we did it at that school. We did self portraits. Oh, cool! And the plasticine. Okay. Yep, and that and that really helped my drawings. Yeah. Um, and then I took that and like turned my head into like a, you know, like an alien head. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah. You've you know you've all your stuff is always kind of like. Not, not all of it, but I mean, even tattooing in a way is, you know, I'm always thinking in terms of dark art because it's just like yeah, what I do, but you've definitely gone there and your stuff, yes. your stuff, you know, you, you, you go there, you go there on a lot of, I've seen a lot of works of yours where you're yeah, kind of yep. doing dark stuff and, um, yep. and, and even like, again, I like to, the void. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But even the tat, you know, the tattoo portraits are, you know, there's tattooing in general is, is a, it's a, I don't want to say it's a dark thing cause it's not, but it is like, it is over. I would say if you, not that reality is like this, but you divide everything into light and dark tattooing in general, I feel in a good way is more on the dark side in the good way. <laughs> <laughs> not as a bad thing but well, like you're 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 um if you're tattooing the body you're tainting right. the flesh that you were born with so you're you're marring a surface that was originally more unmarred. pure or whatever yeah. you know so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I, I i you know the you're you're just you're destroying the body it, yeah, and it's self mutilation in a way, but <laughs> I, you with know. beautiful images. Right, right, right. Hopefully, I guess you know. Yeah, you know, there's all there's all different kinds. Yeah, of but you tattoos. but you know what I'm some, saying. Some dark imagery on the body. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. yeah, for sure. But you know what I'm saying. It's kind of like, it's more. Uh, I just cannot come up with the words to describe it. But anyway, point being, my point was that you know you you don't shy away from doing dark work and stuff and even those doll paintings no. th there there were i would call consider some of those dark art absolutely you know yep. super creepy. i don't know if you remember the the nuns i painted yeah and the nuns for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah those were that was about dark. 2008 <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was a gift for paul booth yeah yeah they were they're were perfect for last rights gallery those were uh, yeah he's like i would like if all my all my friends like try to make art that's so outside of what they would do i'm like i'll fucking do it oh really yeah, yeah. yeah it was it definitely was like whoa i didn't i didn't know i was Sean going you know him. i was going through a divorce <laughs> and uh you know i grew up in in religion and abandoned oh, wow. that. okay you know in my in my teens and then uh you know for, for fun i was like i'm gonna do a series of nuns masturbating fuck it <laughs> They're great paintings. Let's man. just let's just go there. People loved them. They sold them all. Really? <laughs> oh yeah, they fucking flew off the shelves. I'm like, what the hell? You know, one of my friend, you know, a couple of friends are like, man, that's still some of my favorite things you've ever made. I'm like, uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks? I got, I have the uh, also I've got the um, that uh, skeleton soldier guy from the, the oh yeah yeah you do from the metallica yeah show. it's hanging up yeah, right yeah. outside i like there. that painting i love that painting it's one of my favorite paintings in, Thanks, my, in my collection i love Thanks, it man. yeah yeah i have a couple of really great chet's ours oh yeah yeah we i think we traded for that we did yeah yeah um yeah. that's cool uh so so any i guess i i i wanted to talk a little bit about you know there's a lot of dark art lovers in the tattoo community for sure absolutely you know? yeah yeah and that's why that's one of the reasons I felt so kind of at home there when I first got got involved a little bit. It's because they're so yeah, I, into dark art. It's interesting. There's, you know, and not not to generalize, but I think a lot of a lot of artists like dark music. They like loud aggressive music. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people I know like really heavy, heavy lyrics, heavy, you know, very visceral physical music. And they're the nicest, sweetest people. Yeah, right. I think there, there's something about having an outlet to express yourself against the things that, you know, maybe that, that's why I am so happy is because I I can get out the things that I need to get out by doing, 
imagery that isn't necessarily pleasing to the general public right like I'm, I'm i i'm not interested in pandering to the masses yeah um, yeah i am definitely and not an outsider but i am i'm part of a little niche community in the tattoo world you know being the tattoo world where it's an enormous community but we're still like the estranged stepchild of the world you right know? yeah yeah nobody knows who the fuck i am nobody knows who any of these tattooers are like we're our own microcosm and that's totally fine i don't i don't want to pander to justin bieber i don't want to yeah. you know <laughs> you know i and there's nothing wrong if you like that kind of music i was on a in a trip to israel with a group of tattooers and we were at a this bar restaurant dinner place and everybody was having the greatest time and you know they started they were playing music of of that area and it was awesome and all of a sudden they started putting on american music and fucking britney spears comes on and everybody in the bar is singing and dancing to it and i just walked out i'm like <laughs> I, this isn't me like i can't even pretend to fucking engage in this shit right <laughs> and i got really bummed i'm like fuck i'm on an island by myself like it was we i was a little high a little tipsy so i gotta leave him like i was sad i was like man <laughs> yes yeah, you turn i just you you like cool music i, I like the i mean we we have i think some similar taste in music you turned me on to that one band uh mccluskey is it mccluskey is yeah they play it here oh man they did like a 20 25th anniversary show here. really have I've you heard viagra, heard viagra boys yeah they're great <laughs> best band the last few years they are pretty great on, on constant repeat yeah if you don't know viagra boys do it now I Street just, why it's, World. it's such a bad name for a band but they're such a great band. is it i don't know maybe not <laughs> have you heard their lyrics uh i don't know the lyrics I... are uh, you know, hilarious. they're it's pointed and it's you know it's comical and it's social commentary and it's tongue-in-cheek and mm. it's smart but it's perverse and it's it's low bro you know it's yeah. uh, um the sebastian murphy the singer of the band he's a tattooer he's oh a really yeah and he uh he the guys who Form that band with him heard him they're friends of his singing at karaoke and they're like holy fuck we need to make a band together oh really <laughs> you never sang you never was in a band before and it's like this is what you get from that like wow that's just the the planets aligning you know and yeah, you, yeah. You created this thing that's it's everything you know there's there's electronic dance music. There's jazz in it. Like it's mm -hmm. fucking. No, they got a great awesome. sound. I mean, it's awesome. I, I haven't listened enough to really listen to the lyrics, but um, you can't put them in a box. Yeah. Which I love that with any kind of music. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're not a stereotype of yourself and you're not, you know, there's not an, uh, um, a music mogul telling you what's going to fucking make all the money. All like right. They're making art. Yeah, they're yeah. making art. Yeah, for better, for worse. Yeah, you know, and you can you don't have to like it, but that's what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those are all the 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 greatest bands, bands that you that are really uh, art rock bands. Essentially, yep. those are my favorite bands. I think you turned me on to what is it, Minutemen? Yeah, the Minutemen, probably. Yeah, Minutemen. Is that one of your favorite bands? Yeah, yeah. Talk about them. Yeah, I love the Minutemen. Yeah, we had that. We yeah. went on that trip. We drove out on that uh, to that. I don't know which tattoo show it was. We drove out together and we were playing music for each other, I believe. Yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> that was a fun trip. I'm all I'm always at every everywhere I go, I'm like, what are you listening to? Yeah. Because <laughs> I want to hear new stuff. I know. You know I, I, I I we listen to what we listen to. And the great thing about working in tattoo shops is you're you're working with a, an eclectic group of folks who like all different kinds of music. And right. it's usually um not what you would ever hear on the radio yeah you know? yeah so it's it's pretty cool yeah yeah definitely but uh, the tattoo community has good taste in music and to bring it back around to dark art they have a good uh they have good taste in art and 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 i and i feel like um as a community they 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 are more um they're more into dark art than 
any other community I can think of. There seems to be an inordinate amount of people into dark art in the tattoo community. Like in in, sure, in, in sure. reality, dark art is kind of a fringe thing, but in tat in the tattoo sure. community, it's like kind of a normal thing. It's not even fringe. Well, there's, the there's also community. a there's within the microcosm of tattooing, there's a whole subsection or subculture of folks who want dark art imagery on their body. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. that's a that's a huge force in in the community. Right. Tons of clients and you know individuals that want that kind of imagery on their body. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I don't have, I have, I have aggressive, some aggressive imagery on me, but it's a lot of, a lot of skulls, a lot of creepy things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get some skulls um, and stuff. I got a lot <laughs> of creepy tattoos and I love them all. <laughs> you know, they might not necessarily be drawn in a creepy way, but the subject matter is, mm -hmm. is not for the masses. Yeah. Yeah. So were you into, uh, any of those kind of movies when you were growing up or anything or movies or anything a little bit, but no, I was never, you know, I've never, I, I watch film and movies and series and things, but I'm, it still is never really, um, it's just there. It, it doesn't necessarily not outward, not obviously inspired me to want to do things. I, I would say. So you're not really a movie guy, is that what you're saying? I like them, but yeah, I'm not. Oh, gonna okay, see interesting. Because yeah. I'm like a total yeah. one of those, yeah, total no. movie guys mm -hmm. that like watches a movie and thinks about the sound design and no, directing. I'm not, I'm not that person. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I I've, I have a friend who's a uh, film director, and you know, I've told him before, like I'm just not moving pictures. Don't have the same effect on me that paintings do paintings interesting like going to the louvre going to you know different museums it's mm -hmm. just, it has a different power and a different overwhelming sense of inspiration for my body and my brain right that's yeah i don't cool. know why yeah yeah why. that's interesting i mean i know and, you know and i think part of it too maybe is because i when i you know i see some of these fucking movies and shows i'm like all these guys are pretending yeah <laughs> you can't get pretending you can't get past that <laughs> like i i like the real like not reality shows because those aren't real but, yeah yeah you know like um films about crime and and you know like true crime and that kind of stuff i'm interested in mm -hmm. you know things that are a reflection of what's happened in in the world like i'm interested in more than fantasy and more than I'm not necessarily trying to escape when I'm watching mm -hmm. something. Yeah. I've, it's funny because I, I think that in order to enjoy a, a, a film, I've thought about this a lot. Cause like I am, I'm like a total movie nerd. That's how mm -hmm. I got into effects. Cause I was just a movie fan sure, and a uh, horror and sci-fi and stuff. Um, but it's in order to enjoy a movie, you have to buy into it. Yeah. You have to you, let go. You have to, accept the reality that they're presenting because movies have different styles like some are kind of cartoony and goofy and sure you sure. know and, and some are super realistic and sure. it, and it's kind of you know or like something like the french connection that i don't know if you ever saw that movie the french connection yeah it's like that's got this really gritty almost documentary feel to it so it, it, it's easy to accept and then you've got yeah. other things that are like i don't know a wes anderson movie or something it's more kind of like weird cartoony sure quirky. I, mean, I, I enjoy watching them but after i watch them i'm not thinking about them. yeah 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 they're not affecting me you know i can laugh i can cry i can feel emotions over the moment of it but once the moment's gone it's not hmm. it doesn't resonate i've known people that are like that with music i know i've known a few people that are just just never they never got into music. And I yeah, think that crazy. is the weirdest thing. Yeah, that's crazy. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just... I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know if this is, relates at all, but, you know, I didn't grow up with, like, nobody around me really had video cameras or, you know, yeah. nobody was making their own I, Yeah, I was making movies when I was, like, nine years old. Yeah. <laughs> Super 8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three-minute awesome. film. That's awesome. Yeah. So it was always, like, a creative medium for me. Um. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I was from the TV generation too, man. It's like they just sure sat in front Pop of the that TV. kid right there. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, do you, do you I have think the art that I'm drawn towards the most? Also, it's like social commentary. Yeah. Like work that has a, an opinion and a voice and it's mm. a reflection of the world. And, you know, it's in, maybe not making a statement, but it's some kind of, you know, there's, there's something there to grab onto. Right. Not just ha- has a narrative. Right. Right. And not just, uh, I don't know, art for the couch. Yeah. Like a, you know, fucking pretty person in a field of flowers. I could give a shit, <laughs> you know, it's, it's mm. fine. It looks nice in people's houses, but it's the last thing I want to do. Yeah. Same here. It's the last I thing I want to look at. Yeah. Can appreciate the yeah tech the, tech, the, technique yeah, and stuff yeah and and the you know, the sense of light or sense of color mm. or, or composition or rendering or and the beauty the beauty of how it's done like there's so many artists who show it like a gallery like Ar- Arcadia right and right like to so use that gallery exam is an example Steve will say Steve uh, who owns a gallery would say it himself he's interested in beauty and he's right the things that he shows are beautiful to him and he wants to, you know, that's the kind of art he wants to show. We did a, I did some group shows with him and I did a couple skulls. Um, this is years ago um, when he was in New York before he moved back out before he moved out of here. And he's like, man, these, I got to say, these are some of the ugliest paintings I've ever seen. Really? Thanks Steve. <laughs> um, they were just like realistic paintings of creepy skulls. Right. Um, and they, you know, they both sold and he was happy about that, but that's crazy. And then, and then, you know, I was painting tattooed portraits and he, you know, he, a couple students of mine from Ringling had were working for him. And I, you know, I would go to New York and visit his gallery a lot and we became friends, mm-hmm. uh, friendly. Um, and he was always nice. He's always, I still see him at art fairs. He's always nice. Um, you know, but he's like, you know, I've always had this idea of somebody doing a series of clown paintings and I've approached other artists to do it. And I think you're the guy to do it. I'm like, why the fuck would you think I'm the guy to do this? The last thing I want to do is paint clowns, man. <laughs> Creepy clowns, maybe. Could be fun. <laughs> I still don't want to do it. I want to do what I'm doing. I don't yeah, want to right. do somebody else. It's like, that's illustration. I've, I've, yeah, right. I do enough commercial work. I do enough commissions for people to you know and i don't know if this is a way for you but for me typically when i have an exhibition i'm making exactly what i want to make mm-hmm. yeah and i'm maybe considering you know 25 percent of the work is like all right i'm going to make some smaller things that potentially could sell yep Regardless of subject, just because they're smaller. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, like I want to paint whatever I want to paint. Yeah, that's why we got into this whole game is to do mm-hmm. paint what we want to paint. Otherwise, it'd be commercial. We'd be commercial yep. illustrators. And 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 time. for me, the reality is like I typically sell twenty at, at by the end of an opening, twenty to thirty percent of the works on the wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's how it's been. Yeah. Um, and I'm you know I'm I'm in a weird. N- niche where most of the things i'm painting are portraits of strangers right that's you know, true and yeah and it's you know i'm not yeah sure we want to sell art and it's not to me it's about documenting my community mm. and it is a little bit of odd to make potentially i'm making money off the likeness of of someone else right mm-hmm. so yeah. that's a weird uh yeah. it's a weird place to be and i'm not driven by uh, well i'm gonna paint this guy because i know this is gonna sell it's not about that at all. right yeah yeah um you know and i there's this, a, a huge group of people that i haven't documented that i still want to so i'm always trying to filter in those individuals but i know if i'm i get more excited working on things that aren't portraits or things that are a little bit looser where it's body parts and things like that where i can mm-hmm. actually play and explore a little bit um yeah it, uh you, do you choose your the people that you're doing the portraits of i do i mean okay like the question is 
do you choose people on a particularly just on a visual all basis? Reasons. Okay. No, all different. But well, I mean, sometimes have sometimes. you ever like, I mean, yes, have, the have, last show I did, I, I was in Seattle uh, and at a convention that I've gone to for a number of years. And there was a couple um, people, well, one girl that I knew and another her friend that I met, I was like, man, this girl is so cool looking. I want to do a painting of these girls. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't nece- it wasn't about like, well, I know who this person's tattoo art is and I want to document them because of their place in the community. It was just like, man, their jewelry is cool and their shirt's cool and their hair is cool and mm-hmm. like, their vibe's awesome. And this is like an individual who has a lot of presence. So yeah, that's like, kind of what to I capture that presence. That's kind of what I'm getting at is is uh the uh, yeah, the uh the the personality of the person has something to do with it as well. Definitely. Are there people you wouldn't want to paint because they don't have a presence that you enjoy necessarily, you know what I mean? Well, if somebody who wasn't nice to me or I didn't like, I yeah, I might not want to do a painting of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what I was getting at. It's like, yeah. uh, you know, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I've also, cause there's is, some, some people that like maybe have an amazing look, but, but sure. They're assholes. And so that seems like it would be hard to, to um, do that. for commercial work. I've loved doing it. I oh, used okay. to do in uh, Florida. I used to do a column for a local magazine there and it was a round table where you would, it would be a, a, um, like a profession talking about the profession or group of professionals mm-hmm. from a profession sitting in a room talking about the profession and they would print out the conversation and I would go in there take photos of these people do drawings and then I would do um, like loose sketchy paintings of them that would go with the uh, article mm-hmm. and one of the groups of people were plastic surgeon surgeons in florida Mm -hmm. and they were like the rottenest soulless evil they were just like they believe that every single person should have plastic surgery right and they know the aesthetics of the human body and they were just like just shitty like and i went out of my way to like make them like look snarky really (laughs) oh yeah 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 not not in an over overt way right right like I leaned into it enough where it's like, yeah, you guys are fucking scumbags. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't with my own art. No. Yeah, I'm um, just, it's just because it seems like. <clears throat> I, I, if, I'm doing my best to try to elevate and celebrate the individual. And I, you know, unfortunately in the past more than the present, you know, I'm mostly working from photo reference and a lot of the photos I've taken have been on the fly in conventions where the lighting's not great. Mm. And I'm not, I have some photography experience, but I'm not a photographer and I'm winging it Mm -hmm. where the photos are so bad that it's more, it's been more important for me to want to document this person and put them in an exhibit together because they make sense with the rest of the people in this exhibit. And sometimes the likenesses aren't quite there, mm-hmm. but I'm like, get over your fucking ego and just do it because it's about right. representing the person and putting them there. And you know what? After the exhibit's closed, I can go back into this painting. Mm. I can make this likeness a little bit better. Have you like, done that? I do it all. The time. Really? Oh yeah. I do it all the time. I That's... go into a lot of paintings. I mean, I move enough stuff, but I still, I've gone into things that are 15 years old. Oh yeah. Wow. Sitting on the wall, I'll get a fucking uh, wild hair up my ass. <laughs> like that, just that little corner of there is bothering me. That's a, that's a classic Frazetta thing. He was doing that. Oh really? Yeah. Like his people would be like, no, cause these are like. A sta- paintings that have been printed you know they're established yeah, yeah, Rosetta, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and yeah. he's like an yeah, old yeah, yeah. old guy and he's like he just would be like fuck it no it's like i want to yeah. fix this he would do yeah. that there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> totally fine you're just making it different yeah yeah and it isn't necessarily better or worse it's just different yeah know? and i i think i i need 
and I, I would assume that you do too. A lot of us do. I need a deadline of an exhibit to be like, mm. okay, here's a body of work. I want to obsess over it and then I want to let it go. Right. Oh yeah. Definitely. And then I want to move on to the next. Yeah. And sometimes I might dip back into those old things because they weren't fully what they could have been, or maybe I don't even put them in the show because they're not quite there. Right. And they might go into the next exhibit. But even so, like I need this constant momentum. Yeah. I need momentum. I need the ball that's fucking rolling and rolling and rolling. Yeah. Cause I, I can sit on not that I sit on my hands much, but I can sit down and watch TV a couple hours a day and do nothing. Mm-hmm. You know? It happens. Yeah. I'm human. <laughs> Take time come on a podcast. Well, this is fun. <laughs> I know it's been so long. Yeah. Last time I talked to you this much, it was when we drove out, probably in the probably you know yeah 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 probably. Yeah, that was that was fun. Well, now we're really getting to the end, the real end. Bye bye. (laughs) (laughs) Um. So, I don't know. In closing, what what would you like? What would you like to say in closing? Um, you know, I think, well, the premise of your, your show is a, it's a dark art society podcast. I think there, there is a large community of folks who engage in the dark arts, whether they know it or not. I'm definitely somebody who does that. You know, my interest lies in dark imagery and, and things that have an emotive quality to them and there's something not necessarily sinister but something underlying that's the thing it's like dark art does not necessarily mean sinister or evil it can mm-hmm. yep but it can also mean like mysterious yep and shadowy and you're not sure what's going on it's it's like it's a feeling it doesn't yep. have to be the you know there's a wide range in there absolutely i had a, a client of mine who forgot my name one day and he's like is shadowy barber there <laughs> kim keeps calling me that <laughs> it was ridiculous that's your um, new, your new nickname yeah shadowy <laughs> i got a lot of nicknames from all different friends yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah i don't care it's all good you know i i think um you know i think for anybody who's interested in the arts it's just doing like there's no nothing to stop you from doing other than yourself yeah. And, you know, we can all make all the excuses to not be productive, but it's on the individual to do those things. Um, you know, I used to paint in our tattoo shop, which is a very large open space, um, but there's quite a bit of activity in there. And it's hard to hide what I'm working on. And, mm. you know, there's there's something about sitting with what you're doing and not showing to the public and kind of stewing on it and, you know, going through the motions and figuring it out. And for me, I need some kind of personal space to do that. Oh, and so this you're painting at your place right now. This is my dining room. Oh, yeah. okay. 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 Yeah. 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 I've t- I t- Kim was okay with me taking it over a few years ago and it's a fucking art room, man. And, yeah. you know, sometimes we'll have dinners here and we'll move some things around and it, it's worked. Um, but I have everything I need, you know, I have, one, two, three large mirrors in here. I have good lighting. I have easels with wheels. I have, you know, enough space in two rooms to step back and look at things. Like nice. I could I could use the excuse that I don't have enough space to make big works, but I've made six by eight foot paintings in here. Like really? <laughs> yeah, man. Like there's nothing that's gonna stop me from being productive. Yeah. And I think it's having a mindset of Figuring like a lot of people don't know what they want to paint. So it's figuring out what your subject right. is. Subject to me should relate to your interests and your life and whatever that means, you mm-hmm. know. And if you can tap into that, you know, I think writing helps. I think reading helps. You know, I think a lot of people don't read enough. I think, mm-hmm. you know, getting allowing yourself to like consider your thoughts and your your opinions and all those things and to apply those into your art and and reflect on your your personal place in the world it's you know it's like 
I feel like musicians are or artists are the same as musicians. Like we have something that we need to get out and we have to express ourselves and we're doing it however we do it. And, and if you have the need to express yourself, figure out what that medium is and just fucking go for it. Yeah. You know, it can be a stick figure. It can start as this crude, ugly thing. Like, you know, there's, there's folks who do it in a sincere way and there's folks that do it for commerce and it's like there's no wrong there's no wrong answer it's like that's right for you uh there's people who who do it in a way where it's like it's uh it could feel like shtick or like um they're you know they're doing this act but that could even be your art right Um, do you know do you know john kilduff who John Kilduff, K I L D U F F. No. Mr. Let's Paint TV. No. <laughs> he, oh man, everybody, look now. He did a public a- access show here in Los Angeles in, I think, the 2000s, where he would run on a treadmill, mix drinks, and paint. <laughs> and he would take callers and they'd be like Santa Monica gangbangers, like yelling at each other. And it's fucking hilarious. Wow. Um, but he, you know, he's ridden a bicycle and like try to paint a landscape riding a bicycle like he's a fucking he's a maniac and he's just making art and he's trying to come up with ideas of how do i do something that's you know off the cuff and like different than what's being done Mm -hmm. and he's a he's a skilled artist who's figuring his thing out you know and he's he's like a local legend that nobody knows about right you know like all of us struggles, you know, and he's just trying to make a living and he's trying to make his art affordable and he's producing, Hmm. constantly producing. Yeah. Constantly producing. Nothing's going to fucking stop that guy from making art. Right. He's got, um, uh, it's not a, I don't think it is. He's got a club, the paint till you die club. Hmm. You can get a patch. You can buy a painting. I have, (laughs) I have one of his little paintings, paint till you die club. He's awesome. No way. I yeah, can't he's a really it. he's a really cool, really cool uh, artist who's doing his thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think you know if you've got that need to express yourself, I, I suppose the first step is to to just start something, and yep. eventually, yep, it might. It's going to take some time, but you'll you'll find the thing that you love to do the most, and and you, and you just kind of start following that thing. But but if you sit and think about that's that's the thing it's like no almost no artist i know that i can think of just intellectualized their idea first and then did it it's like it comes your your voice as an artist and everything comes out of the process of taking and starting and just doing something and letting it develop as you go you know what i'm saying sure yeah well yeah everybody's got their own own mode of working have you seen carl dobsky's process Mm -mm, man he's got the process as like a lot of old i think old mm, master paintings where he has he comes up with thumbnails he comes up with an idea he's wrong he's writing down his ideas he's fostering ideas he's constantly reading he's constantly connecting and you know, to what's happening in, in the world and the news. And he's trying to come up with, he's looking at art history, he's traveling the world, going mm. to museums, he's looking at paintings from the past and the present. And he's trying to tell a story about the present that is reflected by the past. And he's starting with ideas on paper. And then he's drawing thumbnails of potential compositions and scenarios and, you know, narrative situations and then after he finds a composition he's happy with he hires models Mm, yeah and he sometimes photographs them separately and he like sets up um a situation maybe it's like a a little three-dimensional thing that he's built or maybe he's even building it um on the computer with like 3d modeling a room Mm -hmm. Uh, and he does a perspective drawing and then after he's drawn all his figures and figured out his composition and all that, he'll do a little painted color study. Mm-hmm. And he's done all of this legwork. He knows exactly what he's going to do. And then he makes his fucking painting. And right. it's this epic fucking thing that is informed. And he's worked out all of his issues 
beforehand. Like yeah, he's yeah. not just he's he's not just going in and winging it. Like yeah, he's yeah. got a, he's got a severe plan of attack that's so thought out um, and labored over that he's not second guessing what he's going to do. Right. Um, and that's what works for his brain. And right. His, right. You know, it's like that's the way that he wants to work and he needs to work. You know. Yeah. Everybody's totally different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I that's kind of how I not maybe not that in depth, but mm-hmm. that's kind of how I approach my my work now. Okay. So it's like I'll do a sketch, get get my idea, do or usually doodling and just coming up with ideas. Then I find something I like. Then I'll do a study. Yeah. And then yep. I'll and then I'll do the painting or so or the last show I did I did a study took it into Photoshop and finished it up to where it was like a finished image and mm-hmm. um, like totally finished. Everything's perfect. And then I projected that and traced it on the board, yep. India ink, and then painted it from my Photoshop reference. Yep. And it was <clears throat> just so efficient and fast and I needed to do them fast. And, sure. Uh, yeah. You know, you know what you're going to get yeah yeah so you have a process yeah it was but it was a different it was a new way of working for me and it, and it's like yeah, that's a really efficient way and it's you mm-hmm. know i'm always kind of trying different ways of working so you're doing more work on the front end exactly so. and it, but the paintings were taking like two days i mean they were oh, wow. small 11 by 14s they were no big deal mm-hmm. but they're still you know they were detailed portraits with detailed backgrounds it were just like two days because it was like nice. kind of like a paint by numbers. And it was, it was really fun. I actually enjoyed it, nice. you know? So, yeah, but I mean, I guess my, my point, I, I know a lot of people that want to, that want to start painting and, and they're just learning. And it's like, you know, sometimes you just got to just start simple, just anything, just yep. any, just, just start. And, and that simple will... object that you have a connection to. Yeah. 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 Uh, we did, uh, we did, um, uh, when I was teaching, um, couple weeks ago in new hampshire uh one of the the other guy i was teaching with nick baxter brought up an exercise he is fucking awesome crazy (laughs) it's a crazy artist artist, man his work has really evolved yeah Um, but he was like you know we've done a uh let's paint uh an apple with 30 brush strokes or less oh so we just did these quick like all right that's cool how how many what can i make this look like with 30 brush strokes that's great let's try it with 24 and let's try it with 20. And then I'm going to try it with how, how many few brush strokes can I make this apple look three dimensional? Right. I could do it with like 15 where I was like pretty happy with it with, a, with shadow and everything right. where, you know, the whole, the shape of the apple is just one fat brush stroke right. <laughs> where you're not letting your hand off the thing. And the you know, it was a great exercise. Yeah. That's really cool. You know? And every of all of them look like they were from my hand, but they all look completely different. Huh. What a great idea. Doesn't have to be an apple. Yeah. Could be an orange or a banana. Could be a cat or a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like look around you. That's what you can paint. Or a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's a good time to end out. Don't hang up and then we will say goodbye. Okay. But don't hang up yet and I'll say goodbye to you all after. Right. But um the last thing you need to do on the show is you need to just say goodbye to the audience. Just say however you like. Just say oh. goodbye, audience. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, everybody. <laughs> bye.